Welt. Welcome to Warcraft Reloaded, a podcast brought to you by Mash Those Buttons, covering World of Warcraft Classic and its community. I am Bobby, also known as Blazin' Bob, and joined once again, Mel, aka Melorita. Welcome to the show. Hi. How's it going? It's going good. You, you never asked me that. I know. Switch it up a little bit. Keep you on your toes. <laughs> Oh, and returning to the show, I believe, for the third time, might be, I think it's the third time, we have Josh Corbett, the man from Countdown to Classic, the GOAT of Classic WoW podcasters. How you doing, sir? I'm good. Thanks, Bob. Thanks, Mel. It's good to be back. No need to throw in, like, no, no, none of that GOAT business. We're all just, <laughs> we're all just people doing what we love, you know, talking about WoW and all that stuff, but... Um, yeah, I think it probably is my third time. The end of the trilogy, like whether or not the end of the trilogy is, <laughs> it might not be the worst episode, but it'll be the spiciest probably. I'm, I'm getting older and I'm just yeah. getting looser with my tongue. So <laughs> yeah. And it, like you said, Bob, when, when we were, before we were recording, it was kind of like when you're not on your own show, you do play a little bit faster and looser. So yeah, it's always a bit of fun to do this. Yeah. And it's always yeah. fun for me too, because I'm, you know, you, you temper your opinions a lot of times, I think, on 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 a count countdown because you you're trying to get the guest ones, and so I love it when we get to have you on and you just get un unfiltered, Josh. I love it. <laughs> yeah, well, I mean, the, the dirty secret is my takes are the worst, so yeah, <laughs> it'd be fun to still get them out. I guess. <laughs> I mean, it's really like you know that's what they say. Like classic is different for everybody. Everybody wants different mm -hmm. stuff. Like you know, it's. So I don't know if they're bad takes. They're just your takes. And I've got tons of people tell me I have a ton of bad takes. And I'm like, well. Yeah, but you do have a ton of bad takes. That's your opinion, man. <laughs> that's just... Yeah, no, it's it's true. Like, I mean, straight off the bat, it's funny you say that. I've, I've seen, and, and everyone's wising up to this concept of subjectivity with, you know, Classic Plus. And we've seen the, the few big posts that have popped up. Um, over the last uh, month, really, in regards to Classic Plus on the subreddit, which I still, you know, haunt religiously, um, it really has become a thing where people are talking about it. I made the joke on Twitter that, like, there was one particular day where, like, three big posts went up, and I was like, you know, I, I, the devs are on there, uh, you know, posting their things in disguise, trying to get the conversation going and drive a bit of hype. <laughs> Which, you know, mm -hmm. it's, it's, I mean, I, I believe it happens. So I don't think it's weird to say that, you know, maybe they sneakily <laughs> get in there and smoke the fires. But um, yeah, it, the, the people are wisening up to the fact that subjectivity is a thing and it's okay to be like, hey, you know, I might want this out of Classic Plus, you might want that and realize, and we all realize now that as the meme is becoming, ask a thousand people and you'll get a thousand answers on what Classic Plus should be. And like, that's fine. It's just a melting pot. Ultimately, this is maybe something where you do kind of want to throw it back to the devs and be like, maybe we'll have to be guided by your best judgment. Yep. Yeah, I would love to see. Uh, we saw, uh, what's his name? Oh, dang it. Uh, the guy that said the cataclysm at BlizzCon when they announced cataclysm. Dang it. It's, but he came back to Blizzard. Oh, Metson, you mean? Yeah. Be cool yeah. to like have him involved in the classic plus stuff. Find out that he's been that's what he's been doing since he got back. That'd be that, that'd be cool. But I don't yeah, I don't I know mean, that it's, he's it's not impossible. Yeah, it, it, like I mean, he's one of the guys that brought us everything we loved, you know. So that would be cool. But yeah, well, okay. I like to start off the sh the show by thanking our take. Patrons in Thick Lizzie, Croxford, Braxton, and Turtle Whale. I'd like to remind everybody we stream live on twitch.tv slash blazinbob, B-L-A-Z-Z-I-N-B-O-B. We also have a, it's not new now, but a Discord server. Uh, it's discord.me slash Warcraft Reloaded, or go to warcraftreloaded.com to get a link for that. Um, So we're going to go through, we're going to do a... A, a listener voice mail. Then we're going to go through what we've been doing as of late. Then we're just going to go over some of the news. I don't know how much we'll really discuss it. It'll just kind of depend. Um, but 
Uh, we'll go. Th we'll go through that, and then at the end, we're just gonna have like kind of like a fun classic plus wish list. I'd love to have chat. Uh, you know, um, like come in on this too and give us your ideas. But we're gonna do that. We also have a voice, a voicemail, and a and a Discord question per pertaining to that subject. So that's gonna be the show. Hey, Bob. What's up? I can't wait. I can't wait for when we get there because unlike what I was actually like when it counted in school and university, I actually did my homework for this one. And when you sent that through about an hour ago, I was like, fuck it. I'm going to sit down and nut this one out. And I wrote down on my little pen and paper. I was like, all right, I've got a good one to talk about. So I'm looking forward to that one when we get there. Awesome. Awesome. Yeah. Well, I thought like you have been the champion out there screaming at everybody classic plus classic you know so i thought this would be a great topic for us you know like you are you just what fresh right like yeah i'm a season I, mastery I or say, something i wouldn't say i'm so much a champion of classic plus even though i am titillated by the concept of it i'm a big champion of the next step for classic if that makes sense yes yep well, cool. Well, yep, we're we're we are gonna get to it. So, uh, with that, let's start out with the first the first voicemail. To remind everybody uh, at home, you could call in to eight one six eight six six one zero six six, or you can go to speakpipe dot com slash warcraft reloaded to leave us a message. We love these; they're great, and uh, they remind me of old school radio. So, I really love them. So thank you for sending them in, and here's the first one. Hey, Bob and Co. This is Dirio the Hunter from Atiesh Alliance. Uh, have a question for you that really has come up in Wrath of the Lich King and something I've noticed in my, my raiding guild. Uh, shout out to all the folks who are literally shaking. Um, have a question for you. Been noticing that these days a, a lot of folks um, – have a main raider in, in in one guild, and then they'll have an alt in a, in another raiding guild. You know, maybe a guild that's lower on progression. Certainly, a, a character that's recognized as an alt. But really, you know, characters in two different guilds. And I think that this is a, a really cool thing. It, it's something I've never seen before. Typically, you're in you're in one guild, and you have you know your 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 main character and three to four alts in the same guild. Um, but what I'm finding is that folks that want to raid more than, you know, twice a week and, and want, you know, priority loot on their alts, what they do is that, you know, they'll join another guild that, um, you know, like I said, maybe lower on the progression. They recognize the character as an alt, but they're in more than one guild. And, and you know, I think that that has pluses. I think that it has it has minuses per, 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 per chance. Um, and I don't know where I land on the issue really personally. I, I just think it's interesting. It's something I didn't see in Vanilla. Um, it's something I, I didn't see in TBC, and I don't remember from, you know, original uh, uh, WoW either. It's something really I've seen more recently. So want to hear your takes on it. Uh, love the show, first time, long time, that sort of thing. Take care. Bye. <laughs> okay. Um, I've got a couple thoughts on this, but uh, I'll offer to let you guys go first if you would like to. What do you do? Oh, so kind. Mel, do you want to jump in or shall I? You go for it, Josh. Okay, good, because I want to get my joke off the bat <laughs> first. All right, I didn't think guild polygamy was legal outside of Utah, but here we are talking about it. So, look, I, I don't think it's quite as prevalent maybe as suggested. Um, I still look just from, and this is, again, only my opinion because it's all I can see when I play the game. Most of the people that do have their alts generally stick within the guild, but it's far from, you know, unheard of to have people stick an alt in another guild. I mean, but the main driving factor of that in my mind has always been something like you know not quite lining up with the alt like maybe for some reason your alt is of a class that couldn't get a start with your guild so you've got to park it somewhere else where they are more needed or for some reason when you play on the alt you play at a different time or, or some shit you know it's just generally maybe the stars don't quite align that you might run off and go and see another guild on the side but generally speaking, the vast majority of people that I've run into happily run all their alts through their main guild. But when people don't, I'd, I've never come across any sense of 
awkwardness or animosity or even light, you know, prodding or amount of shit. No one gives a shit. Oh yeah. Okay. You run a character with another guild, whatever. Like that's, I I don't think it's been a very big deal. Right. I agree. And I think, honestly, I feel like the majority of the people that I know that have alts, I I guess one of the big things is, is there's most guilds don't run multiple runs, right? So if you do have an alt character and your main character is in your guild's run, they probably don't have another run for you to sign up for, right? For you to be in another guild run. And there are quite a few guilds that run multiple, you know, teams, but I would say that's the lower percentage of guilds. And I think, I don't know, I guess most people I see have a guild and then they run GDKPs with their ults or something to get them geared up or to run 10 mans and five mans with their current guild. I feel like a guild is a lot and it's kind of like a little family and to have two of those is kind of like getting married and then having like the in-laws and stuff. And so as long as like I'm the main family, it's fine. Right. You know, if your other guild is your in-laws that you don't, you know, like as much as your own family, then that's fine. I might like my in-laws more than my family. Well, that's because my family's your in-laws, so <laughs> that makes sense. Yeah, it's a little obviously. Bit of, just a little bit of brown brown nose in there, Mom. I <laughs> I I love you. I'm just totally kidding. Um, but okay, so, all right. So first off, I think the reason you're seeing this happen a lot more is we're at a point in the game where alts are pretty friendly and easy to to get now. I mean, every every uh, count has at least one boost which they can can use then on top of it leveling is a lot quicker um you've got like you can use all kinds of different heirlooms and different things like there's just a there's making a new character is a lot easier and then on top of that like tbc remember we had to do all the freaking crazy grind to uh to get attuned which was not the easiest for a lot of us, like on multiple characters. I I did do it on on three different characters, but I also play a ton more than most people get to. So, but like, I think that's one of the big things is that it's just alts are easier now. Um, as far as like, I think Mel's right. I think the majority of people probably are in one guild and then do the rest of their characters in GDKPs. And, like, that's what I do. And, like, I run my other two characters. Um, I, well, I run one of them with twenty with our second guild 25-man raid. But then I also run 10 mans with the GDKP with that guy. And then a whole other rogue that just runs with the GDKP, period. And I'm with this one group that's kind of like a guild. Like, half <laughs> of the people are like regulars like we're we are actual like we're actual buds now like like a for-profit guild right like we're a non-for-profit guild and you're in a for-profit guild over there with your gdkp yeah i mean it really (laughs) feels a lot like a a guild like the you know oilers that come in usually don't talk much like you know and like there's always you know half of your your guild that just doesn't talk, you know, in Discord. Like, it's it feels very similar. Um, so, but I, I have seen what you've seen too, though. In our second raid, we have a whole handful of people. So our second raid is like a handful of alts from our main raid. And then it's also a handful of alts from another guild. So they're, mm-hmm. they're, they're like main guild. They're in over here. But then their alts raid with our second raid and our alts. And then there is some mains in that in that raid group, too. So I have seen it happen. I just I feel like Mel, for me personally, like one guild is a lot for me to handle, to be able to have relationships with people and, you know, yeah, have it, you know, be a friend thing rather than a business relationship. So. I don't know that I could be in two different guilds, but yeah, I've definitely seen it happen. So that's but I agree I've with got. Josh that it doesn't usually cause controversy, right? Like I've never seen people upset that your alt's in a different guild. Well, the, the GDKP thing is a good point because of, again, like 
you know, the high volume GDKP uh, thing that's become, you know, a bigger part of our lives in, in, you know, classic over the last few years, obviously. Um, Bob, you're right to point out that, you know, that's just, and, and as we're hearing in chat as well, you know, that's just another community and, you know, Bad Band Kitty is also equally right to point out that, look, it might be a community with a slightly different feel, but it's still another community. There's, there's pros and cons to GDKPs somewhat peeling you away from your uh, regular guild in air quotations. Um, it's great to, you know, variety is the spice of life. It's great to meet more people. And if you've got your GDKP community, and you've got your regular guild, that's great. But whilst it's also expanding your pool of interactions, it's also slightly watering down the um, quality of those interactions, if you know what I mean, yep. potentially. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and for sure. one big bonus that I have seen from it, like specifically for me, I've been able to take uh, strategies from GDKPs that I'm in and then tell them to our guild leadership and they could pick and choose what they might want to take from it, what they might not want to take from it. I could do the opposite on the other side with the GDKPs, stuff that, you know, we have gotten right in our raid but is it going so well in the gdkps how, many, how often does that happen come on um i mean there's i mean there's been a few kidding. different times <laughs> yeah um but but yeah it's like so if you get somebody you know somebody's alt you know say they're in a really good guild like for instance this happened with def camp and melderon in vanilla ale was in on was in onslaught but then had an alt that was in their guild. And they said multiple times that he was so benef bene beneficial because he was able to tell them different strategies that they wouldn't have been able to find on just your regular YouTube video. So like I can spy. definitely see like... Well, it's more like a, like a ringer. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, right? Well, I could I I could see that as a positive for our, our for a lot of struggling guilds too. Yeah, anybody any alts from Onslaught that want to join, I'm sure we'll be happy to you know take you and let you tell us what we need to do differently. <laughs> yeah, well, for us specifically, any fusion alts want to come over to our second raid? You're 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 welcome there. You're welcome. Um, Bob, you may want to look. They said Josh is a little quiet. You may have to turn just, him up on your end. I just okay. turned him up, yeah. Yeah, yep. sorry. That's my broken mixing board I warned Bob about. <laughs> He's in advance. <laughs> my weak, limp dick microphone at the moment. I'm sorry, everyone. It's all right. We don't judge. Uh, <laughs> yeah, and 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 uh, and in chat, they're, they're um, saying that, you know, they're making the point that, like, you could use a GD. DKP to farm new new you know raid members for your guild because the roster boss is always a a, a thing you know so mm -hmm. it's definitely like it's definitely a way to find people and like maybe they'll be like oh okay well this was just a GD DKP guy but now I'll make him a raid guy you know like so yeah, I think it I think it goes both ways too you know like when you're trying to fill a raid and you you know make it a GDKP so other people can come in and you start to recruit that way. I think that's great. I also think the other side of it can be good. And I'm not saying GDKPs are the best thing that's ever come. I have really only run like one in my entire existence, but I don't really like to play you all a, that. You read a often. Chinese GDKP or no, it was Brazilian. Like they were, they were talking in Spanish, Spanish the entire time. And I was like, and then they just randomly say an English like command, and you'd be like, you would have toned them out, and no, then you don't that wasn't hear the command. The one, I wasn't there for that one, I don't think. But either way, I I do think that it has also helped some of where your guild also felt very obligated to do certain things for a long period of time because there was a few people that still needed things from X raid, especially ten man content. Right. And I do think it's lightened the load a little bit with that, where people kind of just are able to find easily groups that they can get into that, you know, I feel like most people know good GDKPs or, you know, well-organized GDKPs, at least in our guild, that they can sign up for, that they can get 
the items that they need if they have the money that they need. And we get most of our consumes and enchants and gems and everything paid for by the guild. So we usually have a decent amount of money <laughs> without the WoW token. Yeah, I mean, yeah, well, I mean, this question was about guilds, I guess, but I have definitely seen it. I There's no way for just like Josh, you know, I see what I see and like I don't see everything. You guys do write in a lot and different things, but like, you know, that's still here saying stuff, too. So I just don't know. But I do know that I've seen it more than I ever had seen it prior. So, yeah, I will agree. I will ag agree with you there, at least from my part. Anybody else would add anything to that? I think I think that was a good. No, a good I feel like I, was, I I'm I'm running as far away as I can from the GDKP <laughs> conversation. If I'm like, one day, I was one day, look I'm at just you, gonna, Josh. Yeah, and ask, oh, but you did, can see me going like, no, I'm not saying that. I'm, I don't want to say those words too often. I'm so I like nothing against you guys, and obviously it comes up in conversations about wow. But it's just one of those things where I've I feel like I've talked about it so much. It's not that I have. Mm -hmm. I wouldn't say I have nothing left to say. I've got a fucking lot left to say, <laughs> but I'm just, I'm so over talking about it. Yeah. Yeah. And they're so different too. Like some are scummy uh, beyond belief. Some are really nice. Like finding them is a pain in the ass, but yeah, we've, yeah, on, on this show too, we've talked about it a ton. So let's move on to what's everybody been doing lately. And wow. What have you been doing You've been doing a lot of PvP on the era PV, uh, PvP server, right? The PTR. Yeah, I have. I So it was, it's actually, I think it's a really interesting conversation about um, this week-long PTR that Blizzard decided to put up to say, to satiate us while they took down the hardcore <laughs> PTR. Um, great, great decision because they knew people would revolt. But obviously it was also practical because they did actually have something to test. They've, mm -hmm. you know, overhauled the honor system and, and that's fine. You know, moving forward, basically classic era and whatever we get next, you know, with a fresh server, be it SOM2, classic plus, you know, basic bitch, fresh, whatever we get, <laughs> um, we'll now adapt this new PVP system. And it's gotten, you know, a universal praise and, and, you know, approval again in air quotes from the community, <laughs> um, but it all really, it, it comes down to, you know, things that we can't see on whether or not it's going to work. Because I do vividly remember in Season of Mastery, you know, something went awry with the numbers and the calculations. There was a, a bug in the system or, or basically Blizzard, maybe they didn't, it wasn't a bug, but they got the numbers wrong. And a couple of people in my community lost their fucking minds because the honor calculations were all off. And that's the only thing you've got to look out for when you do start messing with the honor system, obviously, is you just want to make sure everything works and that um, not only that it's working, but that the calculations are fair. Um, because if people, you know, we all know there are some incredibly intense players out there who will <laughs> rip the hood off this car, look at how the numbers oh, are being formed and will fucking tear you to shreds if something is wrong in the, in the maths. Um, so look, it's all good now, but you know, let's hope it all works later down the track. But yes, Bob, to answer your question, I've been PVPing like mad. Um, you know, when you get something that when I say the word hen house, not everyone will understand what I'm talking about, but when you get something like an official hen house, hen house was just a private server. That was the same thing. Insta 60 straight into battlegrounds. People just use it as, as a battleground server. Um, you know, we get, when you get that on an official basis, um, people had a lot of fun with it. I was, I was having just as much fun as I was losing my mind as well. And I don't know <laughs> if my complaints are justified or not, but I mean, you know, it was a one week thing. What, what the fuck do I care? But like, it really did attract some incredibly sweaty players, which it was always mm -hmm. going to do. And that's fine. But it was a great window again into this age old conversation of um, how the hell do you make Battlegrounds fun and an enjoyable experience that both sweaty players and casual players want to re return to and return to over and over ad nauseum? It is such a tough question because both sides go at each other like rabid dogs. Everyone's mm -hmm. wrong. Everyone's a fucking idiot. Blah, blah, blah. You can't change this game to, to make it better for one of those crowds. But my my whole thing has just been like, you know, I was in there on my druid, my rogue, a warrior, um, you know, hunter, trying all the classes, having a blast. 
Um, but it, it really is a thing that like it, the game is not fun when you're getting absolutely annihilated. Um, and yeah. I know it's a social game and I'm already triggering people. I know it's a social game that <laughs> prompts you to get your friends together, to be played with other people. And that's wonderful. And that the but the in, problem uh, is when you've right. got a game mode of this game, that so drastically decreases the fun for people if they don't do it in a group. Um, and I've always hated the knee jerk response of just get a group loser because you can't <laughs> always just, you know, your friends aren't always online. I'm sorry. Right. That's the reality of the situation. So sometimes you are going to have to queue up alone. And if this thing, if battlegrounds are fucking ridiculous alone, if you run into a pre-made, um, I just, and that's the problem is we can't work out a solution. So maybe you do just sit there and go, fuck, maybe we don't touch it. But you know, I've, I've really been big on the whole, I'm sorry if we're ruining a few people's fun, like, you know, cap the group, <laughs> cap the group at five, maybe even, you know, my suggestion was three, but people think that's too extreme. Cap it <laughs> at five. Don't let you know a group of ten go into a battleground. Um, you See, know, everyone they did was saying, cap it though. In t I don't know if it's still capped, but they kind of capped it in TBC. Yeah, and they changed it back, right? I don't know or what not. they did, but we basically we stopped doing. We just started doing like say it was Arathi Basin. We do two to three groups of five. We all queue. <laughs> if our queues popped at the same time, then we all went and like we got in. As an yeah, actual so, pre-made many times. The only caveat, though, is sometimes when they changed it to where you could be both Horde or Alliance, one of our yeah. groups would be on the other team, right. <laughs> which was actually this, funny as hell. This puts the onus back on Blizzard, obviously, as the developer, to, to stop the workaround from being achievable. So, and people absolutely bob through that suggestion out there. You know, if you can only do a group of five, we'll just get two groups of five and queue and hit the button at the exact same time. It's fucking easy to do. Okay, cool. Yeah. We, we have to work something out to try and avoid that from happening, whether it's possible or not. I don't know, but all, all I'm getting at is. They were able to fix it uh, in AV, I think though, because they stopped us from doing it somehow in vanilla classic. Cause we were right. doing, we were destroying all, there was an alliance AV server and we were just destroying and they did something and then all of a sudden we could only get like 40% of the groups in or you know like a third of the groups in well, or something it in my opinion it's kind of where you start to and again I, I know I'm a filthy casual guys and I always trigger the sweatier <laughs> players because I am a champion for the casual player but um, you kind of test the logic or, you know, the true desires of the sweaty player when you start to work through the process on this one where we go, like I said, it's any, any negotiation should have both parties walking away at the end of the day feeling like they kind of lost. That's how a good nego negotiation works, right? It's give a little, mm -hmm. take a little, okay? So when you sit down at that negotiation table and you say, hey, hello, sweats, I am the filthy casual that you hate. <laughs> Um, we need to come to a compromise. You know, we need to reach a halfway point here. So what can we do? Um, we're not having a fun time being destroyed by you because we very rarely play with other people, even though we can, we don't because they're either not online or we've got no friends and we're fucking losers. Just deal with it. <laughs> you refuse to play with, uh, you know, alone or with anything less than nine players in your group because you just want to get the honor per hour and um, get to rank 14 as quickly as possible and stomp your way there. And, and that's how you like to do things. Great. Okay. Let's find a halfway point here. Hey, how about if I were to suggest that you guys now can only play as a five group instead of a 10 group? Rabble, rabble, rabble. That's fucking bullshit. I like playing with my friends. Well, the good thing about that is you still have four of your friends. So maybe that will <laughs> please you a little bit. Um, maybe you should um, limit your friend pool here. You know, well, not everybody's quality. Come on. And, and my point is like, if, if we still get the stink being kicked up over, I can only now group with four of my friends instead of nine it kind of reveals that maybe the argument we're having here isn't that they want to play with their friends. Maybe just maybe it's a little bit more that they just want to stomp at all times because they don't want the challenge because they know what the greatest honor per hour in the game is. They don't want to rank, you know, forever. They want to get mm -hmm. the ranking over and done with. They want to just bang this out and, and finish. So they just want to win and like annihilate people every battleground they do. 
So where does that leave us? So you guys just want to kill people. Yeah, 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 we do. So like, isn't it, is there any wiggle room for like kind of having a fair match here? No, not really. So you, you, you're you happy with the other party just having a terrible time while you enjoy yourself. Yeah, basically. Like it's just, it just starts to break down. Do you know what I mean? Right. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and I think that and was the argument too when, you know, when it was suggested that there's, you know, group cues and then solo cues, right? Like if you want to play in a pre-made, you can join this battle group queue and you have 10 people and you can join, right? Or if you want to play solo, you can solo queue over here. And I think a lot of the argument was that takes away all the fun from the pre-mates because they're going to go up against other pre-mates and that's not as much fun. And it's like, well, <laughs> well, that's not fair either. Right. Like I, and I get the yeah. idea that, you know, sometimes you want to queue with two people and like, that is fun. Right. So I, I don't love the idea of solo versus full pre-made, but I do think it points out what exactly what you're saying is that they, they don't necessarily just want to play with their friends they want to dominate they want to win very big and they want to win fast mm-hmm. yeah, yeah and- that, that's a really good point sorry sorry bob just i'll throw oh, uh, hijacking your show for two seconds because i'm so passionate about <laughs> hey, this point you're the guest just, you're the to guest. Piggy- <laughs> just to piggyback off of what mel said and i do want to hear from you on what you think about this bob but like you're, you're exactly right mel i don't want to make this a one-sided thing like you know i'm more than happy to be told when i'm wrong as well because it is a fair point to raise from the sweaty point of view that hey dickheads it's not fucking fun playing against like teams as good as us every fucking game. Like I don't want to get bogged down into the hour long bloody war song gulch between these two epically matched teams that can't fucking do anything because we're basically just the yin to each other's yang. I yin was in yang, a three you know I mean? hour war song gulch where my team, my, my pre-made refused to give up. I was like, come on guys, let's just give up. Listen, that's when you leave and you take the 10 yeah. minutes that you can't do for another battleground. Come on. That was yeah, so I, I respect that that's not fun. So again, that that's their beginning position. We don't, look, we don't want pre-mates versus pre-mates because that's not fun. And then the casuals say, well, we don't want to only fight pre-mates because that's not fun. So where's the halfway point? And I think that conversation starts at the cap. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. I agree. Well, and I think... A way they could combat that, that you know, the the way that everybody was queuing with multiple groups is just, dude, if you queue to a BG and you don't take your queue, you're locked from that BG. Like, it doesn't have to be all BGs, but you're locked from that BG at least for five, or something. Yeah, five yeah. to ten minutes, you know, and then. That's going to incentivize you guys enough to be like, nah, we'll just, we won't do this. We'll just, we'll split up in groups of five and we'll just, you know, because yeah. in Arathi Basin, you could, a group of five that's put together well can change the tide of a whole, of a whole BG, oh, you know, 100%. so. 100%. And they can still easily win a war song. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yep. Um, so, so yeah, I'm, I'm with nice. you. Like in terms of, in terms of, um, uh, you know, God, what did you say? I've just drawn a mental blank. I'm so sorry. Oh, just um, talking about the cues and like maybe time them oh, out. Oh, yeah, cue dodging. Sorry, sorry. That's what I was saying. Yeah, I, I burn cue dodging to the ground. Make it so, so much of a hamstring if you cue dodge that nobody fucking even considers it. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, because yeah. like that, that would, that would, I think, be enough to be like, okay, well, this isn't worth it because we did have nights where. There was too many games going on, and we just ha- had too many problems getting in the same group. We're just like, okay, we'll try this one last time, but this will be the third time, and we're just going to give up after this, you know? So, just like, take whatever you get. Um, yeah. Yeah. So, yeah, I think that would discourage them. Yeah. It's a PVPs are a rough one. You were talking about rogue PVP and vanilla, and it's very, uh, it's a very man on an island, um, play yeah, style. Yeah. I mean, Fuck, I mean, this, are you ready for the one-hour conversation that's going to become <laughs> like, you know, Josh's revelations on Warsong Gulch play over the last week that I never realized before? It's so funny because I always laugh about, I've had this podcast for so many years now, and it's like, how is this guy still only just learning this stuff now <laughs> when we knew all this stuff years ago? Um, I mean, it, shit, it I learned really something was, new every day. Yeah, it it really was. Like, I mean, when I played Classic 2019, you know, I played a Priest, I played a Hunter, and I played a Warlock, right? And a little bit of Mage. Um, 
I barely did Battlegrounds. I've still like, I barely did Battlegrounds 20 years ago. I barely did, did Battlegrounds um, in Classic, you know. And you barely I'm, did them because of Rogues, right? Well, no, 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 no. Just, I, I, I just wasn't, <laughs> yeah, I know, I know. I just wasn't that into it. But like, because I didn't really become this weird PvP bloodlust kind of guy until like 18 <laughs> months ago, you know, when we were in TBC. Um, that's when my eyes kind of opens to PVP and I was like, wait, this is a lot of fun. Like, how have I never really PV like, yeah, I've PVP before, but I've not like sorted it out. And now that mm -hmm. I kind of, kind of somewhat know how to handle myself in open world PVP, it's become much more fun. And now I'm like, well, I'll entertain more serious battleground play now because I kind of know what I'm doing. And then I got taught another lesson over the last week in this PTR that I have no <laughs> fucking idea what I'm doing. <laughs> but that, that it's, it's always been a funny thing where, you know, I'm horrible in group situations. Like I was beyond disastrous in arena um, in TBC and wrath classic. Um, and I'm horrible in battlegrounds because I'm such a lone wolf dickhead. I, I, will always my the greatest thing the greatest knock on me with world of warcraft is always that josh ironically plays an mmo and has no idea how to play with other people um <laughs> it is always going to be look it, it's always it's the funniest and the saddest part about my gameplay to be honest with you is that i have fought the fight for some reason not push this on the game but i fought my own internal fight to be like I'm sure I can play WoW basically alone and you can, but it's just not the same. <laughs> um, and right. you'll get very different results. So I'm happy that now I've become a little bit more competent as a PVP player to go back and revisit battleground, certainly in SOM two classic plus, whatever we get. I don't know if I'd go as far as saying I'll rank, but I'll play more battlegrounds. <laughs> but, um, look, yeah, we'll start on the, so basically, as I said, Bob, I played rogue, I played druid, I played hunter, I played warrior. Those are the four classes I've mucked around with a lot on this PTR with. And I probably look, I put like 15 hours into this PTR over the week, which is not like an insane amount, but it's an amount I played. Um, so, what spec are you using for rogue in, in well here's PGs? here's where i here's where i fucked up right and i think i think this is another tangential conversation in and of itself <laughs> um i made the mis well i would call it a mistake i made the mistake that a lot of players make where what do you think i did when he's an inexperienced rogue never played a rogue at 60 in classic i did in vanilla never played a rogue in 60 for 15 years um you know what spec should I be for PVP? I don't really know what I'm doing. How will I solve, solve this problem? I know I'll jump on Google. I'll jump on YouTube and I'll let someone tell me. That's what, what I do for unquote, everything. Yeah. What the quote unquote best spec is. So here we go. Here's, you know, perplexity explaining to me the great backstab spec. Yep. Okay, cool. Whatever it was like, you know, fucking a little bit in all three trees. Yep. Great. Um, the problem is that spec is for like, you know, I don't know. I would suggest it's for experienced rogues who know what they're doing. It's also like the best rogue in the world, basically telling you what he plays. Like you can't just copy and paste that and go like, I'm going to kick ass now. You have to do a spec that works for you as a beginner. If you are a beginner, learn the fucking class first before copy pasting, you know, what maybe the PVP or the best spec is like, I'm I'm becoming a really big advocate of maybe going as rogue as like taking on like meme talent specs, what others might consider to be a meme, you know, like dumping points into things that you kind of think are cool that suit your play style, even though the rest of the community might think they're dog shit because you'll have fun using the talent or ability that you think sounds cool that works with what you want to do. Even if you die, even if you don't hit as hard, you're enjoying the class more. So do that rather mm -hmm. than listening to a guide that it might not be applicable to you or your play style in the fucking slightest, but, oh, this is what everyone else is doing and this is how I become lead. I mean, I'm going through that in Diablo 4 right, right now. I'm like... Okay, so I read this all this stuff from maxroll.gg, and I'm like, okay, this how okay, this what okay, 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 like, and it is nice, but I kind of miss the days of just been like, I mean, back in the uh, the original vanilla, we were just making specs. But you were talking about the backstab spec. That spec is amazing if you're singling out clothies, and especially if they're drinking or eating, like. 
you can ambush, backstab, backstab, and like you can just delete people. But then you go up against a, a warrior, you know, and then it's like not so much. Go up against a paladin, not so much, right? But like certain classes, you just own, and then there's the the hemo spec, which is what like all the rogues used back in the day. You all, you saw those iron forge like kill montages where they would kill kill people in iron forge or in storm wind and they just stun lock them the entire time well for one-on-one -on -one, that's like one of the best specs you could have against any class right but it's just it all depends on what you want to do and rogue is definitely a great one-on-one -on -one class but if you're in the group battle system like you get deleted real quick yeah and and that's what i was fine i had to find out the hard way and i said i'm totally fine with everyone laughing at me making all the mistakes that they made 15 years ago oh, same. but you know that that that's what it was like because i was like hang on hang on i couldn't wrap my fucking head around this and i'm sorry bob i'm gonna swear a lot during this episode you're fine because um, i'm very very passionate about all this stuff but <laughs> you know Here's what was doing my fucking head in, where I was like, hang on, hang on, hang on. This is a battleground. It, it basically everything, you know, to a certain extent is group fighting. Um, I, I'm now playing this class and this spec that as soon as I'm out of stealth and there's more than like three people in the vicinity, I get fucking destroyed yep. in, you know, just two blow global. the fuck up. <laughs> and, and it was, I was like, not quite smashing my keyboard, but I was very, very frustrated going like, okay, I, I get that rogues are squishy, but what is my place in this world where everything here is group fighting and I can't group fight? And I eventually slowly started to recon <clears throat> sorry, recognize the situations where I had to, you know, maybe as the rogue, you've got to peel off a bit more. Maybe you, you roam and you sap someone in mid and you go off and you find the the pack of two that thinks they're going to go and get the flag and you, you know, maybe have a go at them with one other person from your team. You know, I just, I, I had to stop charging in like a fucking warrior as a rogue to yep. these four on four group fights and then doing the Pikachu face when I was fucking the first one back in the graveyard. Yep. You want to <laughs> like, you, you want to kind of like maybe try to open up on the healer or the caster. That's like, a little bit away from the group, you know, and like, Oh, I was doing that. I that will tell you straight away. Like in TBC, I remember playing my warrior in, uh, in our, our arena matches. And as we got higher and higher, you'd run into more and more rogues that were uncanny. Good at staying right in that zone where you can't charge and you can't hit them. And then they come in, stick and move. They just stand back here, and you try to get to them so you could charge. You try to run, run away, and they'd follow you just, a, just a little bit. And like, <laughs> you're just like, it's maddening. That's the mental game. It's maddening, you know. Like, so like the really good rogues are just like unbelievable in PvP. Yeah. But I've never been able to get Josh to that level. Something, Josh had something about you get the healers in the back, and you know everybody's on you right away. Anyways. That is not yeah. my experience as a healer in <laughs> PvP because I play with Bob. And well, but here's what I'm, I was saying: this is because we were playing all the sweaties, and all the sweaties uh, were in comms all over it. And yep. I just kept running into not just pre-mates, but like good pre-mates on this mm -hmm. PTR. These are all the players who are like, "Oh, BG server? Uh, yeah, let me get the boys. <laughs> we'll fucking see you there." And they were just like, "I had, I had a really rough time." So I found myself enjoying it less and less as the week went on. And this is, again, this is more of a, a, we'll talk about the other classes too, Bob, but this is more of a universal conversation about, you know, needing to design this game to be fun because what happened with arenas that we found out pretty fucking quickly with TBC and Wrath, we watched participation fall off a cliff as we realized that it was just being dominated by the, the and, and look, I don't want to shame people for being fucking good at the game. That's amazing. <laughs> they need an avenue to be good at the game. The problem is you have this really big system that's had thousands and tens of thousands of hours put in to be designed and you're scaring away the bulk of the player base from it because it's not fucking fun because they're getting their asses kicked. Well, and that is now being applied to Battlegrounds. It's such a big... See, Vanilla, it's a little... It's better. But as TBC, Wrath, everything goes on, the barrier to entry for PvP is just absolutely astronomically bad. Like, you have to do... And who's going to do that? Like, I basically stopped PvPing in Wrath all together because I'm just like, 
I'm not going to learn all of this. Like I did it in TBC. I was met with minimal success and like, you know, and like, you know, you have to play the right comps and everything else. And just like, I was just like, I just, I, I'm not messing with this, you know? And so I just haven't messed with it oh. in wrath at all, which sucks because warrior is so good now. And I'm just and the like, uh, Rainer is amazing. Huh? Yeah. And I Sorry, feel no. like, no, you're fine. I feel like, you know, arena is one thing, right? I feel like people get discouraged from arena because they're not as good as they thought they were. Right. Like you're not matched up usually against other, you know, people or other pairs or whatever one you're playing that are significantly better than you. Um, I think that more is an ego hit to a lot of people or understanding that they don't have the time to put in to be as good as their classes they would like to be or know as much as they would like to know. Right. I am not opposed to that being an avenue for very competitive players. But I think if you have that as an avenue for very competitive players, they should not also get to dominate battlegrounds. Right. And if they're dominating both, then you have no avenue for the casual player to enjoy PvP more casually. And I think that's a problem. Yeah, well, and then um, also you look at Vanilla Classic and the fact that they didn't put dual spec in, I mm -hmm. feel was one of the biggest missteps in Classic WoW's history. Like, you know how much more fun world PvP would have been in phase two, if I could actually go toe to toe as arms as arm spec while I died for forty five minutes on my way to Dire Ball, I would have at least killed a couple people. But as Fury, as basically a rogue with no utility, I'm not killing shit, right? And like, I'm not going to go pay fifty gold constantly to re to respec, and so therefore. BGs were like very un in like you just didn't really want to do them if you read the wrong spec. Like I remember, I would respec Fridays, play till uh, till Tuesday night, then re then respec back so I could raid Tuesday Thursday, and like that was not a good feeling. Like I want to walk around in the open world with a PvP spec. And it just they didn't allow that to happen, and I think that's a big thing that hopefully you know they're thinking about in era you know i don't care if people rage shut up dual dual or at <laughs> least a bg spec right like it's a spec that yeah. only activates when you go into a bg like on that note i i don't i'm not as fussed as as you are bob with dual spec not being there in 2019 i understand why they did what they did i sure. do agree with you though that it would have been great to have um, and that's why I think, you know, moving forward with whatever we get next, I personally, and, you know, I know people, some people, it <laughs> seems like a dwindling number, but some people might still get upset by this, but like whatever experimental server you do next with, you know, the vanilla theme, it's not even up for debate. Like I would bet my, you know, whatever I have in the world, the dual spec is going to be there. You know, I mean, it's a so. foregone conclusion in my mind. Uh, I hope so. Um, so, hope so. I, I think we need to touch a little bit on what the PTR was testing. Um, just because we didn't really go through that, right? So Yeah, so, so it's testing the honor calculations. And, yeah, well, we um, talked about they, last they've week. Obviously gotten, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, um, I wasn't but, here last week. But they Sorry. need to see... They need to, because they've basically done um, what they've never done before, which is just on the spot live updates with Honor. You know, you you see it accumulating as it's happening rather That's than nice. waiting for the end of the week, That's which cool. is really nice. So it, it wasn't working the first few days of the PTR. And it was it's funny because like Blizzard has to have a bit of a laugh at this as well internally, I'm sure. <laughs> and one of the big features that they've announced, hey, look at what we've done for you. Test it out now on the PTR. It's the first fucking thing that people noticed wasn't working. But um, now it's work it, it was working the last couple of days. So the, the, the <laughs> PTR is off offline now, by the way. If you're listening along going, oh, what? This Battleground PTR sounds fantastic. It's gone. It's sorry. You missed a chance. But, um, <laughs> But yeah, it was it was just basically a big test of the numbers, um, you know, being crunched the right way under the hood. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, the, the, it was. I, I just sort of want to clarify on a couple of things as well. Like, I I don't want to give people the impression that I'm sitting here, uh, really 
going hard to the mat for casuals to be like buffed or some shit in battlegrounds. Like (laughs) I don't care. I don't fucking care if I lose a battleground. That's not what I'm whinging about here. It's I want to have fun. I don't care if it's a losing effort. I want to have fun. That is what PVP should be about for both sides in some way, shape or form. But anyway, that's for them to solve. What's your, so I wonder if the PTR was like this, but something that drives me nuts to this day in BEGs is the keyboard warriors. The guys that spend more time typing oh, yeah. than doing anything else. And I'm like, dude, who knows? If you, if you three guys would have shut up and just played your character and tried to do something, we might have had a different <laughs> shot. But instead, you literally took the entire time just typing and lots of times bad strategies like people that aren't even in the know just seem to like want to type all kinds of stuff and it's like okay that's that's not the way it works no the like one of the worst is uh eye of the storm there's so many misconceptions of how everything's calculated but like but i digress was the like was it like that or was it just all pre and them stuff Oh, no, no, no. It was like that. And I'm, I'm really glad you brought that up because I would have forgotten about it, but it was a huge part of the PTR. And arguably, you know, <sighs> that's just a huge part of WoW life in general. It probably doesn't even matter if you're talking about classic Wrath or retail. You know, if you jump in a battleground, these fucking players just exist. And like, <laughs> it's, I, look, I, I want to dive in on this. I'm sorry. This is a fucking, this is a great like psychological discussion where it's like, what the fuck is wrong with people? Because you're right, Bob, <laughs> every battle ground, ground, bar none. And I'm talking like 100% success rate on this. Mm-hmm. There is two or three mm-hmm. players on your team of the 10 or 15 or whatever losing their fucking minds in chat. <laughs> and I mean losing their minds. Everyone shit. Oh my God, I can't believe you just did that. Lol, look at you dying to this With fucking player. Like yeah. and just trashing their whole team. You're all shit. You know, like just pounces on any little thing that happens and like I'm God's gift to gaming and fuck you, blah, blah, blah. Just and loves getting in the argument. And it is, I don't, I, I've i it's problematic because you want to read battleground chat for the tactics, mm-hmm. but you for the want to fucking look. Like you in, want to look away in, for incoming the lumber bill. children, right? Exactly, but you want to look away for these fucking losers <laughs> who have nothing better to do in their lives than fucking get in uh, arguments with nerds over battleground Josh, like, strategies. It's I have a, too. I, it's, hold on, hold on. Let me throw this in. I have yeah, a yeah. macro that I hit because. When I was younger, I used to get in fights and try and educate these guys, but I realized, like, way before Classic came out, that that just wasn't a thing that works. Like, it wasn't an effective strategy. Yeah, it, it, <laughs> it doesn't work. It doesn't work in Overwatch. It doesn't, it doesn't work anywhere, right? But, like, uh, I have a macro that says less, uh, less type, more fight, comma, we got this, guys, exclamation point. Like, and, like, that seems to work Maybe like 15% of the times, but most of the time it doesn't. They're just like, shut up, idiot. You know, and then I just, I stop looking and I just go to try to fight. Like I try to do the best that I can to help the thing. But yeah, it's like, okay, sorry, Bill. I just, I just had to tell you that because I had to make a macro because I wasn't going to type it because that's a waste of time in the BG. I was just going to like, because when you're typing, you're obviously not able to do. Yeah. That the only time I doing. ever really type is when there was incoming at certain things or like, because like as a rogue, you guard a lot, like in Arathi base, it's like you're one of the best guarders there are. So he's like, go on, I'll stand here. I hope this game is one of the ones where no one ever comes. But listen, nothing was more frustrating than being the priest who we would go cap something. Then every single person would run off and I'd be like, oh, OK, sure. I'll sit here and guard I'll guard this as one of on your three priest. healers. <laughs> yeah. it, it's interesting you say that, Bob. I definitely want to come back. I'm not, I'm far from done with this fucking rant about the pieces of shit in uh, pieces <laughs> of shits in in battlegrounds. But anyway, um, on the point that you just made with you know you're a rogue in stealth, you're in a Rathi basin, and and you're sitting there guarding a flag, um, or guarding a, a cap point. Um, I 
and begging for people to come. Like, do you, do you kind of, do you revel in like the, oh, I hope no one comes. I can sit here and watch Game of Thrones on my second screen Fuck and no. just chill Fuck out for the next No, minutes. no. Like, cause no, I, I hate that. I hate yeah. being on guard duty. The only thing, the only BG that I will watch something on the second monitor is Alteric Valley. And like, I'm still, I'm engaged in the game. It's just like, I have to go guard a... There's more downtime. <laughs> yeah, I have to guard a tower for a, a while. Like, I have to do different things that just don't have me in the fight. But, like, you know, are like, guarding a tower, I could just have my thing right here and see anybody that comes in, you know, so I could kind of watch something. But Arathi Base, in most of the nodes, I have to be looking from right to left constantly to see if anybody's coming because i want to make sure i also had macros for each of the uh for each of the the nodes you know so i could just hit the macro because i want to say incoming lumber mill way before they get there right like i don't want to be trying to type it as they're like coming up to charge me right like so yeah, yeah it's as a, you've got a fucking two-handed sword up your ass. Yeah, so it's the <laughs> worst when I sit there, and sometimes I've guarded the mine at a Rathy Basin, and I get no action the entire time. And that sucks, too, for honor gain, because you're not getting the big battles honor, and you're just chilling there, like, See, and I praying like for somebody to come. Right, because it's it's decentivized to stay and guard something. Because the more you're in the group action, the more honor you get, right? So if you're staying and guarding the mind, because that's the smart and the right thing to do. Because winning is still better honor. It, it, yeah, it depends, though, because then the argument is if you win, the honor per hour escalates things. So, like, you are incentivized right. to sit there and guard because if your team wins, that's a good thing. In a if you're fashion. smart. I, Lots of people I, I agree with what smart, you're saying. Though. Ultimate team player, right? And everybody always thinks that somebody else will be the ultimate team player to stay there and guard and that they shouldn't have to be that one because they're better than everybody else on their team. So they should go <laughs> kill people. This it's, is Bob's it's, argument. It's the person who is happy to put their hand up and say, I'll play goalkeeper. Do you know what I yeah. mean? It, 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 don't get me wrong. There's always going to be those players on a team. But like, Dude, it, it keeper's is a, weird a pretty thing. prestigious spot, though. It is, and so like keepers not necessarily the best analogy, but I can't. Yeah, because there's only one spot one in they can come, right? Like if soccer had oh. five nodes, right? Then it might be a little weird, <laughs> right? I, I was thinking about this the other day, and I'm like, again, everyone who plays soccer or every European is going to lose their mind. Football, um, <laughs> you know, when you talk about the goalkeeper position, it, it, I. I will trigger everyone, even though I don't really believe this, but I'm trying to find a better way. I can't think of a better way to describe it. It's almost like the keeper is playing a different sport. Do you know what I mean? Like it's so different to what they've got 10 other players on their team who do, who are doing such ridiculously different things to the goalkeeper Mm -hmm. to the point that the keeper is the only one who can use their hands. You know what I mean? Almost, Almost like you're playing a different sport. Now just, just, they were my said, favorite well, growing up, though. Like I loved. Oh, I was keepers. a goalkeeper. Even oh, though I, I was a good, them. I was a good soccer player as a kid. I was, I was like, I, I was a good sportsman. I was nifty with my feet. I was, I was either played forward or keeper, and I ultimately went with keeper. Um, but anyway, that was that's another I story. I played defense. Um, so, yeah, like lots of defense. I was a great right. tackler. Mm. So no, no shade on keepers here, guys. I've been a fucking keeper. I get it. But what I'm saying is like, <laughs> it is that weird thing back in the battleground where you are put on uh, defense and like you're a hunter or a rogue and it's like, sit here and watch this flag or sit here and watch this fucking lumber, lumber mill or fucking, you know, uh, mine or whatever. And a long period of fucking time can go by where you're not pressing your buttons or doing anything. And it's a big ask of a player who maybe you don't even know. Hey, dude, yeah, sit there on the bench and fucking do nothing. We love you. You're part of the team, baby. Hey, yeah. You know, like, it and stay alert. It fucking stay sucks. alert. Make sure you're still in the game, right? And make sure you know exactly what's going on everywhere else so that if it does come to you, you're ready. Yeah, and the, but the worst part is I'm fine with playing defense if it mm-hmm. rotates, but it never fucking rotates. It never rotates. Never want to, <laughs> hey, hey, bud, I've been here for three minutes. Mine's subbing in. Fuck you. I'm off to kill them. Oh, okay, yep. thanks. No worries. <laughs> Got it. I'm here. Don't well, worry. It only rotates say you're if a you rogue, force though? it to rotate. Well, like, yeah. when they say you're a rogue and we only have one, you're like, yeah, I get that. But I could be stealth yeah, capping, yeah, yeah. which is so much more sexy. 
<laughs> what a stealth cap. But um, back to while I'm all fired up, back to what we were talking about before, Bob, because I don't want to let this one cool, go. Cool, back cool. to the, 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 the fucking losers who I will <laughs> continue to refer to them as fucking losers who have nothing better to do than argue in every battleground they go to. Um, mm-hmm. it's, it's also a thing, Mel, where like, I, I can't say this with any sort of sense of de- definitiveness, if that is a word. Mm-hmm. Um, but like sometimes you do see, like it might be the person who's, you know, not doing too well on the old scoreboard and maybe there is an amount of projection there. But my my global argument towards it is like this is part of not just wow, this is part of gaming in the modern era. And And I often come back to being the boomer, blaming things like, um, streaming, blaming things like uh, content YouTube creation guys. and all that shit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it's like, I'm not, I'm not Overwatch. saying burn it all down and get rid of content creation, but <laughs> because of content creation and guides and everything and players' dependency on that, we all now think we are the greatest player in the world because we spent an hour or two researching something. And now nobody else watched that. We watched it. We fucking know what we're doing. You're all fucking noobs. And it's just that everyone thinks they're the best. And so they've got this inflated sense of ego and aggressiveness Mm -hmm. about like wanting to be an MLG gamer and no one's comfortable in their own skin being a fucking average gamer anymore. I hate that it's become Mm -hmm. a, um, a, a bad thing to be average. Average is average. And I hate to fucking blow everyone's, you know, burst everyone's (laughs) bubble out there. But there is an incredibly high chance that you are a fucking average gamer because you don't more know likely, what fucking average means. Yeah, more <laughs> likely a chance that you're a below average gamer. But yeah, you, exactly. You're you're exactly right. Like so, for instance, I talked about Overwatch. Like I, you know, you learned that like there's no point in even in voice chat and trying to explain the strategy of the current situation because these people don't get it. Because Overwatch was also very complicated, but like. Crix, who is in chat, I remember when Overwatch 2 came out, or it was the beta maybe, but I went to play, me and Sarth went to play with Crix, and I got so pissed off at one of Crix's, like Crix had a bunch of, of you know, like his Twitch viewers in, uh, in the group, and this dude had the audacity to be like, uh, Reinhardt's not meta, um... Like, why are you playing Reinhardt? You should be playing Zarya. And I was like, yeah, if we were in the two, if we were like in Diamond, yes, I would be doing that. But we're in Silver, bro. And like, I've had play of the game for the last four matches and I've had the most kills of anybody. Like, Reinhardt's fine for this level. Like, what are you talking about? You know, and so like, it's just frustrating that so many people follow these guides and only will do it. And what you're good at versus what is the meta, right? And I think I think Josh is right that people just listen to something and then they regurgitate it and expect everybody to follow because they followed what this person told them, but they don't realize why everybody else isn't following. But what you have to realize about YouTube videos and guides and things like that is that they're also talking to the top 1% a lot of times. And when they're talking to the casuals, they're talking to the casuals in a way that like, Somehow you have the perfect group to be able to do it this way, right? Like you can't have the same strategy when you have one healer or when you have seven healers, right? Gamers, gamers have a bizarre mentality. Sort of one of the bigger things I'm getting at is we tend to, as a social group or whatever you call gamers, as, as a, you know, um, as an entity, um, gamers have a horrible sense of um you know what's the word i'm looking for they don't know how to gauge themselves their their, their self identity is a little bit off in terms of their own skill because the average gamer will sit down no not the average gamer I'm, that's a horrible overextension <laughs> there there are a lot of gamers who would sit down and watch someone like shroud play a first person shooter game and be like in the back of their heads they would seriously be like I reckon I could fucking. I take could do him. that. I, I, I yeah. reckon I could fucking take him. No, no sports. And they're fan, crazy. Fucking no sports fan watches like you know fucking Patrick Mahomes watches Saquon Barkley and goes 
fucking noob, I could do that. You know what I mean? <laughs> and fucking nobody does that. Yet every gamer is like, mate, I just haven't had my chance yet. I'm as fucking good as these guys. Like, it's ridiculous. Dude, they do it too. And it's crazy because, like, so we used to do the Overwatch League uh, recap and Mel ran the the Cavalry pod, uh, podcast about Overwatch and I was on uh, uh, Watchpoint Radio. We did a lot of Overwatch creation, right? Well, I got to know a lot of pros, right? And I got to play with them sometimes. And I would try to explain to people, you don't even understand the different level that this is. Like, you have no idea. Like, we would go into quick play matches, and I'm not going to name names, but, like, we'd have a pro in there playing Tracer, and they don't even play Tracer in the Overwatch League. But they're literally destroying every single person didn't even in need the game. Us. Yeah, literally, we, we were, were just walking it. around, just doing our thing, and they're just literally six killing. At the, they're they're like team wiping every single time, and you're just like, yeah, there is no possible way. But I don't know why so people do, do that. It? Why like so do why do they not do that with sports? I don't get it. Well, here's the thing: is that I think that physical um, capability is much more obvious than mental capability. People often overestimate their mental awareness, their capabilities, their Reaction intelligence times. and true, things like true. that. Whereas physically it's like, you could tell me right now, go run a mile in 10 minutes. And I could say, yeah, that's not going to happen. So true. I, I should have, I should have I should have extrapolated this a little bit further. Of course, there's going to be the situation where you've got the overweight guy on the couch isn't going to go out and think he can be fucking Peyton Manning or whatever. You know what I mean? Like, I get that. There are, you know, boundaries there. But like, <laughs> like I said, you know, I, I grew up, um, you know, playing a lot of sport. I played a fucking decent level of rugby and all that stuff. And like, you know, when you have beers with these first grade rugby players, you know, uh, who are a few levels down from the top tier, these are amazing athletes. These are fucking phenomenal rugby players. And none of them are like, oh, I just haven't been recognized, haven't got my shot yet. You know, I should be fucking playing for Australia, blah, blah, blah. Even with the physicality attached to it, you know what I mean? But like, I, I just felt like there's, even though athletes who are, you know, relatively famous for not necessarily being the most humble, you know, at times there is a lot of bravado and, and, and sort of, you know, me, me, me with, with professional sports. I still feel like there's a pretty good sense of who they are, of their capabilities. Whereas gamers, yes, the, the barrier of entry is lower physically. I understand that. But there's still this thought that like, oh no, I'm like you're sort of saying, Mel, I'm, I'm as smart and as capable and as twitchy as this guy. I, I could do that. And they just, they have no idea of what they can and can't do. And they get fucking taught otherwise on a regular basis, but refuse to accept it. <laughs> it's much easier yeah. to convince yourself that it's other people's fault though in that aspect right whereas when it's something physical and something that is very easily disproven i feel like your mind just doesn't let you get to that point point. and sorry my headphones died so i didn't listen i didn't hear the first part of this but i do think that people want to be the best they want to think that they're the best and having that reality check that they may or may not be the best, even though they've put in all this work to research and to watch these videos and everything else, what they're missing, and this is what I wish people would understand, is what they're missing is that you can't just regurgitate what somebody else has told you. You have to actually understand why what they're telling you is the right answer. The why right? is the and most important. And if you don't know why you should do this in a battleground, then, then you, can't adapt. you don't know how to adjust and adapt when it doesn't go exactly your way, right? So that's why you get the people who aren't doing anything in battlegrounds and they're just typing because it didn't follow the script that they were given. Yep, and so they don't like, know what to do We should have done blacksmith first. Yeah, and if we don't do blacksmith first, then there's no other option. Like they have no concept of what it actually takes to win that game. So they have nothing else to do but type and be angry that nobody followed their script. But yeah, I the, think the, the cherry on top of all this, Bob, was that it was a PTR, and and <laughs> the I loved the amount of comebacks from people going like, "Dude, it's a PTR. Like none of this is literally 
fucking everything's made up and the points don't matter. This honor is not going anywhere. Like, do you know why a lot of people are fighting in mid right now? Because it's a fucking PTR, you loser. And I'm really glad that that got given back a bunch. I yeah. like I like their tenacity to win. I just wish they would put their energy in a different spot besides chat. You know what I mean? Like, and I think the I think the world of Warcraft would be better for it. <laughs> I agree. I agree. I know there's probably a lot of people screaming, going like, even if it wasn't a PTR, you guys would fight mid, which is slightly true. Well, not slightly true, but true as well. <laughs> But anyway, the moral of the story was it's a fucking PTR. If you're wasting energy yelling at people, reassess things. Well, and if you're talking about mid in War or Song Gulch, if you're the warrior, you better be fighting mid. Like, that's your whole job for the whole time. Like, with these strategies that the community have basically latched onto, like mm -hmm. warrior to warriors mid fighting, you know, like, and they're not ever going to get the flag. They're not ever, they're, they're there to lock it down and make the field good for a mage or a druid to run the flag back, right? Like that's the that's the basic strategies, you know, like the, that we've come to like do. But at the same time, there's a ton of other strategies that can work. There's been solo queues where shit's just all over the place, and I've definitely returned it on my warrior. I'm just like, okay, well, I'm gonna go full prot gear. And I'm just going to run this sucker back, you know, like, and so there's definitely ways to like do it differently. It's just everybody has their own plan. And when you don't do what they want to do, instead of adapting, they just bitch and moan. And it's just like, yeah. just adapt, dude. Um, to, to go through like the other classes I was dicking around with, like I said, a, a druid, hunter, uh, um, warrior. Look, warrior, I, I said this a couple of times in my Discord. I've I've never played Warrior in WoW. I've started mucking around with it over the last month, seriously. I'm enjoying it so much more than I ever Come thought to I would. Brown. Um, <laughs> look, it's just one of those things. In BGs, everything I got told about Warriors was true. Um, it's just that it's easily got the capability and probably is the most fun class in a battleground. You know, zipping around the battleground is a lot of fun. But then it's also the, the least fun class because you solo queue and nobody's either nobody's healing you or you're not getting enough heals. <laughs> you have to queue with at you know, least a healer. Yeah, so it, it's uh, to me it's a massive knock on this class. And I was talking to to you know a friend of Countdown Tito who's a regular in my Discord about this who's just like you know a brown fucking um, warrior lover, a, a, a brown enjoyer, and uh, until the end, you know, all he ever wants to do is play warrior, and that's great. Um, but like he's so big on it, um, you know, he was trying to tell me, Josh, you know, don't do it, don't do it. It's so frustrating if you don't play with a friend. And I'm like, <laughs> well, hang on. If there's a class in this game that you can't play without someone else playing with you basically at all times, what the fuck is the point of having that class? That sounds ridiculous to me. It's crazy, um, but though, I, that they I, I go from, it. like, noodle. Well, then on top of that, too, like, it was funny because, you know, like, when I, like, I played Rogue all through original vanilla content, like, all the way through Cataclysm, Um with like a short stint for PVP with Locke. But then like when I came back to classic, I was like, I want to do warrior. Cause you know, they would whoop my butt a bunch. Right. So yeah. So I did warrior and then like, I found out that, Oh, this really does suck. And then on top of that gear is so important. Like there's a, there's a tipping point with warrior with each expansion where you go from shitter to Badass and vanilla is a little different because of world buffs. World buffs basically push the gear limit up to make you badass right off the bat in vanilla. But like normally, it's a real slow grind. And so in PvP, it's the same. Like you're just not doing much until you're you're geared. Whereas my rogue, I created him in TBC, and I had a blast working up when I had shit gear. Because I could still be useful, like, in guarding, in, you know, like, because I could, like, you know, sap a guy. You know, I could call incoming, then I could sap a guy, then I could sheep shot him, 
that I could banish sap. Like I could hold this guy up that's trying to, you know, try to, to cap the flag for a long time. But, you know, if there's two, I could blind the other one. Like I have a lot of things to do that could help the team. Whereas the warrior, I just felt like a wet noodle until I got gear and that sucked, you know? So the starting yeah. part of BG sucked for me, whereas the rogue was fun the whole time through. Well, on on this PTR, they gave you phenomenal uh, phenomenal gear. Oh, did they? Um, so did they give you a rank fourteen was gear? Uh, I actually don't know. It was um, if they gave you great like, gear, then warriors I bet, an, freaking okay, owned. Yell at me if this is way off. Did they introduce <laughs> a new set for Season of Mastery for Battlegrounds or not? Like a new PvP set? I don't know. Because I I feel like I don't know. I don't look either way. You'll. I don't, I'm not going to say what it was because I don't know what it was. And someone will go like, Josh, you fucking idiot. Um, <laughs> but either way, it was very good gear, right? So um, that solved obviously a big issue for the warrior and everyone's in the same good gear. But like, it was weird for me where I'm like, okay, I know I'm a warrior. I'm on a warrior for the first time in Warsaw and Gulch. Let's do this. You were playing I'm, arms, right? Mortal I'm, Strike. I was playing Mortal Strike. Yeah, yeah, yeah good, good. So, so, you know, I've got to be the guy that charges in, leads the way and gets things like, you know, get the party started. And th <laughs> again, because I'm solo queue, the amount of you charge in and it was just the same experience as a rogue where I'm like, all right, guys, charge, let's do this. Fucking they all converge on me. I'm getting <laughs> minimal, minimal to no heals and I'm dead in three and a half seconds. And I'm like, wait, 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 wait. I'm supposed to be doing this as a warrior, right? Like that's my job. But like I'm getting annihilated ad nauseum, and fucking what I what started happening was I was now the laughable warrior after rounds and rounds of getting my ass <laughs> handed to me. I'm now the warrior that's not charging in, and I'm like in the back lines as a warrior because I'm like I know I'm gonna get destroyed, like, so can't I like kind of pick and choose my moments? I'm gonna here? put a bandaid on this guy. I'm gonna put a bandaid on this guy. I'm doing my yeah, job. Yeah, doing my yeah. job. It was it was silly. Oh it was God. silly. Um, yeah, so there we're getting the answer. Uh, Magan the Shaman, rank 13 gear plus BRE is what we had. Oh, wow, okay. BRE. Oh, Shit. The, new gear, the new gear from SOM was the braces and the belt. Ooh, BRE, though. <laughs> yeah. Dang it, I should have logged in. It was really fun. It was really fun when you weren't, like, against the super sweaties. But <laughs> so, like, I, I basically decided... I was just trying to give all the, the, these classes that I'm choosing for the next release a, a battlegrounds a grade, and I was like, "This is going to factor in. I need to know how they're handling a BG because that's going to be part of my overall decision on on you know, it's basically mm -hmm. warrior, rogue, druid, or hunter. That's what I'm picking between, right? Druids are and fun, so man. The, in the BGs, warrior. Oof. Well, yeah, it depends what you're doing. The warrior I gave like a three if okay, you don't have sorry. a healer and a 10, if you do have a healer, the rogue I gave, like, you know, it was, it was a fucking two out of 10 when I didn't know what I was doing, but as I was learning <laughs> more and more what my role was, I sort of gave it like a, I don't know, like a six out of 10 for the rogue in a BG. Mm -hmm. Um, the Druid, I didn't what type of look, Druid I, were you played. Yeah. So I tried to be a flag carrier a couple of times. Um, look, I think I got one. I was pretty bad at it. Like they kept hunting me down because we were up against it's the sweaty hard. players. Yeah. 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 It's not and an like easy job. It, no, I, I, I was talked up like, oh mate, Druid, it's so easy to run flag. All you do is <laughs> carry the flag. <laughs> Yeah, you're a druid. You just carry the flag. Just go carry the flag. Just go carry the flag. It's so easy. Just go do it. It's it's look. There's a little bit more to it than that. A little bit. Um, so a lot of bit. I I actually just turned into a healing druid, and I know everyone wants to vomit over that because oh, fucking healing druid, you're the worst healer. Blah blah blah. Uh, I don't give a fuck if I'm you know min max you know strong at it. It was fun. So once I started just dedicated healing, mate, I don't think the people getting healed fucking complain about who's healing them. Oh, Druid's healing me. Gross. Get off me. <laughs> oh, they're, no, they're very yeah. happy. And Druid healing in BEGs, especially if you use like a spec that specced into like some, some bear stuff too, you are hard yeah. to kill. Yeah, so I I didn't try Heart of the Wild. I was doing deep resto, but I I should mm -hmm. I should have gone back and tried Heart of the Wild, but I didn't. Um, but it was still fun. So I, I'd never really healed in a battleground before. Look, the healing druid. I was like, yeah, okay, this is actually reasonably fun. Even though I'm here to smash and kill people, um, <laughs> I'm still somehow having fun. And you get a 
fuckload of honorable kills as a healer. Oh yeah. my god! Because you survive if shocked. your team is is good and like and like and you're always right in the right. middle of everything. I was so shocked. I was like coming second or third overall on HKs every time. And I was like, what the fuck is going on? Um, <laughs> like I actually didn't kill anybody. <laughs> yeah. I literally didn't touch anybody. It's it's fantastic. Um, but that was a lot of fun. So I was kind of like giving the healing druid, like a, I don't know, like a, a seven or eight out of 10 in the BG. Um, I would say try up, feral druid too, though. Um, yeah. Everyone shits on ferals. Everyone, oh, man. <laughs> in PVP yeah. though. Do they? Yeah, like, in PvP they say it's like the oh, worst thing. Man, dude, they, no, they well, are heart of the heart of the wild. Are you talking heart of the wild or just no? Like I'm talking like actual feral. actual feral. Like you can go cat to kill squishies, clothies. Then like you get attacked by a bunch, you switch over to to bear. Like it's pretty fun. But I would say mm. the strongest spec in PvP in vanilla is definitely mm. the like the bear resto mix because like. Well, they are so frustrating because you just can't fucking kill them. Yeah, I think I think you might be describing the Heart of the Wild spec. Heart of the Wild is basically D-Feral. It just doesn't take leader of the pack or whatever. Um, but it's it's a lot of fun. It's a lot of fun. It's but it's it's very frustrating as well. And everything that people say about druids in vanilla is true. Like you take <laughs> you take like you know start a start a song when you start your one on one and by the time it finishes maybe you've killed them you know what i mean like it's a mm -hmm. lot you don't do much damage but you also can get away from everyone so that's great um but the last one was the hunter i swore i wasn't going to come back uh, to hunter but it's so fucking fun in battlegrounds i hear it's fun i've never played hunter it? ever i've never oh, i've so much fun. level 10 is the highest i've ever got a hunter ever you are so like it's fun to me because I know that I am just being so annoying to everyone. You're right <laughs> up the back. You just you know it really is the most casual friendly class in my opinion because like yeah you'll die but you'll take a lot of people with you. Do you know what I mean? Like mm -hmm. right. it, it, you'll only die if you don't know what you're doing. I'm saying if you're a bad hunter, don't worry because you will still kill people. Um, you just sit <laughs> up the back, target someone, pew pew away. You've got so much range; it's great. Um, obviously, you can start to gain more skill and you learn how to keep people off you. I came up against a lot of sweaty, slippery hunters in this PTR who, at the end of every battleground, they only had like one death because they know exactly how to fucking get mm -hmm. away. And they know when to start disengaging well before the person sort of really turns their mind to them, all this shit. But um, Hunter's just so much of a blast. It's uh, I've really started to strongly reconsider it again. It's just like I want to play something I haven't played before on the next iteration. That's why Druid and Rogue is so high in my mind. And um, you talk about sol so soloing stuff. Hunter yeah. is really fun to do Dire Ball North tribute runs, and you solo oh, yeah, but it, I'm, and that's I'm a bad good time. at that kind of stuff. But you might. But I'm bad a, at that kind of stuff, and I don't want to learn. Oh, uh, you don't want to learn. Okay, see, I was <laughs> yeah, bad at like Mage AOE stuff, but I learned it, it's and awful. then I was, and then I was like, okay, I can do the ZG jumping from the wall, to, you know, the top of the wall to the top of the wall, and killing all those just, guys at one time. Like it was cool, but I definitely. Mastered it to a point, and then I was like, okay, I'm done. <clears throat> well, this is why I always say, like, I'm such a weird WoW player, where, like, I don't get as sucked in to, you know, the most gold per hour, the min maxiness, and all. I just, I do what makes me comfortable, and that's how I enjoy the game. So, like, you sit down, you go, hey, Josh, if you take let's say fucking let's go wild 10 hours to learn how to do the tribute run as a hunter you will fucking rake it in and you'll be laughing for the rest of the lifetime of the server and i sit there and go well yeah i could do that or i could not spend that 10 hours doing that you know i'm i know you're going to say that's 100 or you know it's 100 gold per hour or whatever i'd rather do the thing that's 50 gold per hour oh josh that's 50% less efficient you fucking idiot yeah but it's 100% but it's 100% more, more fun. fun for me so i don't give a shit you know what it, i mean yeah it just yeah. all depends your goals the whole reason i made a mage i didn't want to i wanted to fund my warriors uh the gloves that give you a like seven in axes because my warrior had axes unfortunately like we just didn't have swords drop in our guild and so i had to get the what the freaking i forget what they're called the edge masters and guards or whatever mm -hmm. so I, I like being in the open world i don't like instance farming i like being in the open world mm -hmm. yeah yeah and uh, i mean there was a lot of open world farms still though for the mage it's just like it was it 
just like you say, like you look at videos, you're like, oh, that looks easy. And especially in vanilla, there were so many bad videos that were made on private servers with different rules. And you're sitting there going, okay, I could do this BRD farm. This is great. And you realize, oh, this was on a private server that they that these mobs didn't net, but these mobs net now. So you can't do this. Like it was so frustrating looking up guides and and, and stuff on like that. But I yeah. hated the mage. Yeah, yeah. But okay, so the hunter. What was your grade on the hunter? Did you say it or did I miss it? Oh, so I would give the hunter like a nine. Yeah. Nine. It looks it looks fun. For some reason I've just like we're actually gonna get I when we do this thing, one of the questions I'm actually gonna mm. talk about like it pertains a little bit to Hunter. Um mm. so yeah, that's gonna be fun. We'll do that. But yeah. we probably we probably damn, we like really went on a tangent about this. Um okay. Mel, what have you been yeah, doing? Maybe lately? that's what wow. I do. That's what I do, baby. <laughs> Mel, what have you been doing in WoW? Well? Um I've been playing Diablo. No, same, I'm just kidding. Um, I did raid in WoW. I did a 10 man last night where we somehow wiped on the first boss and then oh, got 49 so out of 50. Rough. So that was fun. Yeah, we f um, yeah, we found out that in <laughs> TOGC 10 man, got to be careful killing the two the two worms in beasts too quickly because then everybody's left with the debuff and there's not enough bops to Stop everybody from dying. So we had a Listen, rough one there. It sucks. So we had a 49 out of 50. I was, trying, I was trying. It was like me and a couple other people still alive. I was smiting the boss, trying to kill it before it's in rage timer. It was not not sufficient. I, my smite did not do what it needed to do, but that's all right. Yeah, it's, it's rough. Josh, do you, do you know about the mechanic in TOGC, the wipe mechanic? No, I don't. Okay, so basically what it is is this new dungeon. I had forgotten about this completely, even though I did raid for half of the time TOGC was out. Like, that's that's when I quit Wrath, and then I came back for the start of Kata and then quit, quit forever. But, like, it's crazy because you get this nice cloak. You get a 258 item level cloak after 10, after, after 10 man and a 272 after 25 man, if you don't wipe once. So is this the, the 50, 50 thing? Or yeah, that, yeah. Yeah, yeah, I know about this. Yeah, sorry, so yeah. we've done two weeks in a row where this group, you know, 50, 50 easy as pie. And then you get a little bit, you know, you get a little bit lax and you don't think about it. You don't think about all the upgrades you just got. And then you kill this worm before he could put the proper debuff out to cure or the proper buff out to cure your debuff, and then all of a sudden you're fucked. Like, it's it's a really weird thing. It's an easy-ass fast raid, but the stress of it sucks because of the wipe mechanic. Like, it really kind of makes it suck. So, yeah, so that's that's what we dealt with there. But as far as, uh, as, far as other... Um, our guild um, got our first 50 of 50 on 25 man, the weekday raid. My GDKP 25 man got it the week prior. Um, yeah, it's, I mean, I've just been raiding on the different tunes, and that's really all I've been doing in WoW. But Mel and I have been playing Diablo 4 super casual. And I think you and, and Patricia have been playing too. Yeah, we well, it was Patricia's thing. She wanted me to buy. I actually wasn't going to buy it. She wanted it, so I went out and bought it for her on PS5. And then I played a little bit, and I was really enjoying it. I haven't had the time to play in like two weeks, so I've been really bad. But like, I I checked it out in an introduct in an introductory way, and like really enjoyed it. And it, it's funny, obviously, seeing the reaction to the season one news and all the nerfs that came in, and people again you know, gamers doing the gaming thing and losing their fucking minds. Um, you know, I, I haven't been playing, so it's not affected me, but it's been fun to watch from afar, I guess. Yeah, I mean, we haven't... I think all the people complaining are the people that are, like, 70 to 100. Like, Mel and I, the highest we've gotten, we beat the campaign and we got to, like, level like 54 60. before... Five, yeah. Yeah, bef before the season came out. Now we're just having fun working up in the, s in the season. It's just a fun game to just work up. And it's 
fairly like you know at the, like, the lower before. levels it's fairly mindless and like it's not like overly like punishing i'm sure if we got crazy sweaty into it it would be it would be rough and we'd probably be bitching too if we knew but shit half the time all the stats that drop i'm just like it's a tough one because it's a tough one from a dev perspective because it's kind of like what do you do because i i've look i'm gonna dance around this delicately because Mm -hmm. people do get upset when we talk about the topic of nerves and like you know in chat as well i understand that like people will be averse to nerfs and it doesn't feel good. I totally respect and get yeah, that. Everybody says but buffs, like, buffs, buffs instead of nerfs. And I'm like, yeah, but then that makes the content not as fun and engaging. And yeah, I don't yeah. know. Yeah. And I'm like, I've, I've personally always thought, and this again, back, you know, one more point in the why Josh is such a weird gamer thing. <laughs> I've personally always thought we've had a, such a, a, um, weird relationship with the concept of nerfs as gamers. Like people are irrationally afraid of nerfs. I get that they don't feel good, but I've always been like, if it's for the good of the game and this mm. game needs this, then why why do we kind of argue against it? Now, and at yes, the it start sucks of the Diablo. Oh, sorry. I was just going to add to it. At the start of the, a new season in Diablo, that's a great time to do it. Say they were to nerf unholy DKs right now with us, you know, three weeks into TOGC, all of a sudden some guilds wouldn't be able to do what they did the week prior, right? And that would feel bad. But at the start of a season, I think it's completely fine. You're starting out, you know, and you're going to do that season Everybody has now. to make a new character anyways. Yeah, so like, so like, I feel like that's okay. Like, you know, I feel like nerfs often come too late, or buffs come too late or, you know, stuff like that. Or you've invested in that character and you've invested in making it better, right? But I also think you get the most gripe from people about nerfs to their class, Yeah. right? Oh, yeah, yeah. But, they don't care what happens to the other classes. Yeah. I say it every time. I'm like... Only when it impacts them. I'm like, I'm kind of excited for Feral Druids getting their buff, but it's fucked up that they're above Combat Rogue. It's just not okay because I play Combat Rogue. That's right. It's like, (laughs) what do you do? Because like, when when we say like, are we saying delete the concept of nerfs? Like nerfs should have never happen in any way, shape or form. It's like, oh, you know, buff the boss rather than nerfing the character. Well, isn't that just a a shadow nerf to your character? Are we just doing it in a reverse faction, a reverse like order? Um, You know, I, I just, I... I'm okay with games being fixed for the overall health of the game. And yes, it sucks that the game was released where we had to go through a couple of months of play where they've gone off. Fuck. Maybe this game is too easy. We need to change things. Yes. In an ideal world that would have been found three months ago and the game would have been launched like this. But the reality is it's been found. Eventually something has to be done and they've done it. Now I don't want to weigh in too heavily because people who play a fuckload more Diablo than me would be like, shut up, idiot. You don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> and they'd be right. But I'm more talking universally about how we have a working relationship with the concept of nerfs. Devs have to be able to nerf something. It's the reality of gaming. Right. Yeah. Yeah. It is. And it's the reality of balance across classes, right? If they didn't nerf certain classes, then everybody would have played those classes oh, regardless we're gonna right? definitely and bring this up about warriors in vanilla when we hit uh the final topic so definitely yeah. keep that keep a pin in that yep go ahead you can move on yeah 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 let's let's uh bust through the news because i really i really want to talk about some uh some classic plus so let's move into <laughs> Time for the news. All right. So um, the Oculus Titan Rune beta dungeon got a couple changes. Azure Ring Captains will no longer proc mere images. Mage Lord Uram will no longer have mere images proc when empowered arcane explosion is cast. I am a smart person and never run Oculus, so I don't know what these changes mean. I was going to say. I just thought I would let you guys know that I'm still not going to run it if it's the daily. 
I presume yeah, that yeah. that's that's the reaction to that Reddit post the other day saying the Oculus is the worst fucking thing in the game. Oh, it's horrible. It's it, yeah, the H plus plus. Someone went in on it. I think. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. No. Like not even a question. Yeah. It, it, I mean, if worse. you're running with five people that know what they're doing, it's easy pie, right? If you're running with any pugs it's whatsoever, so it's just oh uh, yeah, it's just it's just not good. So yep. you guys will have a link to that in the notes, but I just thought, you know, it's news. So we covered it all, but I don't, I don't have anything to say about it unless any of you do. Good. Negative. I'm not playing Wrath. <laughs> all right. All right. <laughs> so the next is a first look at BlizzCon 2023. And uh, when I first look at this, it says that uh, World of Warcraft Warcraft Arclight Rumble, which I'm kind of actually a little bit excited for, but eh, not really. We'll have to see how it's monetized. Hearth, Hearthstone and the Darkmoon Fair are all going to share Hall D, which is the largest hall in the convention center. Then Overwatch takes up Hall C. Then Diablo takes up Hall A. The weird one, the Overwatch World Cup takes off Hall B instead of the BlizzCon Arena. Yeah, I saw that too. That's and, a huge change. Yeah, and North Hall Level 2 is registration now, whereas in 2019, all of North Hall Level 2 was the Dark Moon Fair. It was a huge thing. So I think BlizzCon's a little bit smaller this year, and I don't know that anything's going to be in the arena itself. Josh, are you going to BlizzCon have? this year? I'm not. Look, I, I thought about it. I, I know. To buy I you thought beer about so it. Bad. I, I would love to. I, it'll have to be a virtual beer, sadly. But um, look, I thought about it, but it's just um, it's just a bit much. I don't know because like it, it really Are is. You? Like it's like a it's like a three day trip. Yeah. Um, I would I would get in, get out. It's like you know twenty eighteen to twenty hours worth of travel. You're there for three days, then you go eighteen to twenty hours back. We go I for just, four days. Uh, we get in Wednesday night. Which yeah, is so yeah. much we also nicer. have to take oh, like a I, I could three go hour for flight. longer. Yeah, <laughs> I could go for longer, but I just I don't particularly want to. And like um But and I'll, plane I'll tickets you what, across the pond are rough too, right? Probably it'd probably be like a twelve hundred dollar or maybe the probably fifteen hundred dollar round trip is what I'm guessing. Yeah. I'll t there's a multitude of reasons as to why I've decided to not go this year. I'll I'll talk to you off podcast about one of the other reasons why I've probably decided not to go. But anyway. Um, look, I stare at that map and this, this BlizzCon this year is huge, right? This is, this has got to be a, a big bang for it them. Needs to it's be. their first, it needs to be, it's their first one back. They've got to kind of like, not so much justify Blizz, BlizzCon's ongoing presence, but like, it's going to be a thing because it rakes in so much money and it gets so many people attending, but like it's, you know, first one back in four years or whatever you want to be, it to be a good one. So you think about the announcements that they've got, they, they, they're going to have a lot to announce, quite frankly, they've got, you know, um, um, your next wow expansion, I presume is, is a, a announcement that's coming. Um, you know, you presumably season of mastery two slash classic plus, uh, announcement, your catter announcement. So there's a lot, a lot going on on the wow front alone, right? Diablo, not so much to talk about, but you know, Hey, we're having fun in Diablo four, blah, blah, blah. Um, right. and we got it. Stop bitching. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Overwatch, not so much to talk about. But they will, this is where you stare at the BlizzCon Arena. I don't know if they'd use the arena for this. If they're like, they, they're going to have this huge announcement of the survival game, right? Um, I, I think it's a foregone conclusion that that's, this is the first opportunity we're going to get like a trailer or something of this one shown off. Um, you know, whether or not they do that in the arena, I don't know, but that's what they use like for competitions and stuff. So it's a bit weird. It maybe it'll be the Diablo Hall A is where they'll announce that. I don't know. It'll be it'll be part of the opening presentation on day one. Like here's mm -hmm. the survival game, blah, blah, blah. It'll come out. It'll be huge. Um it'll still yeah. be three fucking it'll still be three years away, but they'll announce it. I oh, think the opening ceremony will be in Hall D. If it's like oh, okay. but they usually like have the opening been, ceremony in all of the halls, right? Well, like they, well, we they were had there. Them, yeah, in multiple places, like Hall D, and then the arena was where you get the Overwatch. Like they kept switching, like, like who was Kaplan on stage. Yeah, Kaplan would do his bit at the arena. the arena. Yeah, 
but the, the one know. the one thing I'll just extra add on top of that, um, not so much about the the announcement thing, but like you stare at the map, and obviously the new thing they've introduced this year is like the VIP pass, right? Where you get to go to that mm-hmm. that extra area and um, eight hundred dollars. Yeah, for eight hundred bucks, you can lord over the peasants below you in, in the <laughs> VIP area. And, Although um, I have heard, look, if you bought yep. the eight hundred dollar pass, you literally got it to buy tickets immediately. Uh, oh, I'm on the, sure. On the first day, because <laughs> like yeah, no yeah, one yeah. was getting those. Um, my I don't know my prediction. It's such that I said I said this the other day. They're evil geniuses for doing this one. It is. A, a very, very smart move. And Mel, you would know all fucking about this. I've got no idea. Very smart move on their part on their behalf For to sure. basically introduce like the Disney Fast Pass or whatever, you know, their own version of what they could offer of it, you know, the premium uh experience of BlizzCon. Well, you I do notice bet- that the level three portal pass is where our media area was prior. Oh, is it? Oh, yeah, okay. I yeah, vaguely, okay. I vaguely know the so area. Like, yeah, yeah, it was yeah, that yeah. big, long area, and then they had the big, like, cafeteria room where we got our food. We had the tables we could work on and everything, and then yeah. they had the room to the side where we could play all the games and stuff. I think oh, look, that's that, in that, this area. They'll have sold all of these, I'll bet. They'll sell out of these premium passes if they haven't already. Um, but do you think... will go down. Yeah, go. Do you... Th- this? I Literally, this tinfoil hat... Do yeah. you think they're still going to have us in that spot and the portal pass people get an opportunity to like mingle with the content creators? Are they using us no. as No, uh, no, no. They they're mingling they with sold the staff. They've already said they're, they're they're shuffling the staff through there. So it's the okay. whole point of it is like they'll literally schedule devs to to who roll their eyes and have to go put their even though they won't say that they do this <laughs> they'll roll their eyes and have to put their half an hour shift in at the vip area mm-hmm. I'm, I'm being slightly tongue-in-cheek of course the devs do like the fans but like you know oh fuck my shift's up i've, I've got to go over to the vips right. and they'll go brush shoulders and mingle and have a drink with people and say g'day um but th- that's mainly I, I don't think it's supposed to be like I just fucking hey. I, I was for just your curious. Bucks, bucks, you get to have a water with S fans. I don't. Yeah. Think <laughs> I just, I just wonder because this whole area was the whole like area where we would, uh, where they had the different rooms where like Jeff Kaplan would come talk to us about Overwatch. We could record it with a bunch of different creators. Like this whole sure area is where we did all that. That they'll, that they'll portion off for that. Either that or they'll put media in the North Hall or something. But. I, I just wonder though, because it would be smart because Portal Pass people would love to just mingle with S fan a bit and it'd be an easy way for Blizzard to like make an extra attraction for that. Oh, uh, yeah, I, mean, I, was, I was already gonna make that. I was already gonna make the point that it's gonna go. I bet you the reports will come back that it was an insanely overpriced item. And if that comes to be the case, mm-hmm. then it's even doubles my point. It would be an insanely, <laughs> insanely overpriced item. It is so um, it is so expensive. For what you get. Eight hundred, like yeah. I think for that, I think the they've had passes like high. they've had passes like this in the past. But you get to go to like a banquet dinner, like I think in the past you get to go with like a banquet dinner with like devs, well, and creators. Of yeah, the game. It was, you you bought a ticket to the dinner standalone, um, which was like a charity dinner, I believe, mm, for yeah, like six hundred yeah. bucks a head or some shit like that. Yeah. But here's the thing is we're saying it's overpriced and I guarantee they'll sell out, which means it wasn't overpriced, oh, yeah. is, which exactly. means there are but, people but, willing to pay for it. Oh, and But that's that's the problem. And Mel, you, you're the, the absolute go to authority on this one. It's like the right price is the price that it sells out at. You're right. But like um, it's one of those things where we come back to the price of Blizzard's digital goods, where we look at all these services. <laughs> we go like, wait, 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 a, a faction transfer is $40. What the fuck? All this shit. And we sit here and we, we criticize it. And we, we say, what kind of a fucking idiot pays that? Everyone fucking pays Everyone it. That's it. the problem. <laughs> yeah, and like, we, we, you yeah, how can't... do you, how do you talk to your, you know, managing partner and say like, Hey, this is too expensive. And they're like, really? Cause we have sold a, thousand of them in the last three months 
Yeah, yeah. And, and that, that it's not Blizzard's fault. It's the fucking consumer's fault. And when yeah. and next year, when it's a thousand dollars, and it, with the reports come back that it's actually a pretty shitty experience and probably not worth the mm-hmm. money in any way, shape, or form, it doesn't matter. They'll jack it up to a thousand. It'll get sold out and again. And the, the, sold like out. I always say, the joke is on you, the consumer. Stop being fucking idiots. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, and well, and that's that's what sucks because that's basically how mobile gaming is ruining our time but like what are you gonna tell like you're gonna tell you know clash of clans that like you you guys should be morally better and they're like dude yeah, we're but selling the comeback all this obviously stuff. is the the easy moral ground to come back and i was i get this is like the person who's bought the portal pass going how dare you tell me what price i should put on my happiness to experience blizzcon this way and like sure hey look if that's what you I want don't. to pay to experience in that way, I can't tell you how to spend your money or how to feel. But I can tell you that there is a ticket for about one fifth of that price that will <laughs> afford you a lot of fun right down there on that floor. Honestly, probably you can have a, a lot of fun of even fun. without a ticket to BlizzCon. Like, oh, you can well, just come well, for I the nights. When I thought about going this year, I 100%, and I said this in 2019, if I ever come back to BlizzCon, I am not buying a fucking ticket to the event. I am setting up at the bar. I'm waiting for everyone to come in because the dirty little secret about BlizzCon, as far as I'm concerned, not about is the con. it's not about the fucking con. It's about mm-hmm. the fucking meals and the drinks outside of the con. The con 100%. is one of the most overrated events in the fucking world. It's... It's, I will say, we went to TwitchCon last year. It's still better than TwitchCon. Like, TwitchCon yeah. was the horrible. If we weren't there with all the creators, it would have just been a horrible experience. But you are exactly right. The majority yeah, the of the fun. It's about the conversations. Yeah. yeah. It's about the gathering of the nerds, yep. not about what they're actually displaying for you or putting out yep. there for you. Yep. It, it yeah, is, like the opening it is ceremony is cool. Yeah, but that's fucking 20 minutes that's long. It. Yeah. 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 And then, like, the voice actors panel for Overwatch was always yeah, fun. Yeah, we but, always, we yeah. never missed that because they were just so funny when they would go back and forth with the different voice lines. But mm-hmm. normally, we would watch all the panels, like, on, on, the, the, virtual f- ticket. on the virtual ticket on the flight home. Like, because, well, also, too, like, we didn't have media every year, but we had media, like, 2017, didn't get it 2018, got it 2019, like, and, like, you sometimes get opportunities, like a lot of opportunities to like do, you know, to talk to devs, you know, in a room with like nine other creators and stuff like that. So like you're doing all that. You don't have time to go to the different stuff. And it really is mm-hmm. just about relationships and networking and fun. And yeah, yeah all, all the memories you will forge from BlizzCon, like anything in in real life, all the business is done at the bar. Right, everything you remember is about the fun and the laughs that you have at the fucking Marriott at the fucking Hilton afterwards, and you will not remember the twenty minutes you spent in line to take a piss at the men's room and all that shit at the convention. Yep, and like, and then also like food. Like usually, you're just going off the campus to get food too, because the the line for the trucks, you know, unless you're like taking turns standing in line, the line for the trucks like an hour long. Like it's it's so funny and. Everybody like thinks when you know people at Blizzard that you have inside information. And I just always tell these people once a year, I might get some inside information, but no Blizzard em- employee that's smart is going to ever put it in text to me ever. But at the bar, they might tell me a couple things, you know, like, and that's something that's so cool about, about Blizz, about BlizzCon. And just, you know, just getting to see all your like friends that you do content like this with over a screen. Like it is so cool. Mm. I wish, what if I gave you a ticket? Oh no, I, I appreciate it. It's not the money that's necessarily holding me back. It's more the, like just the facilitating the whole Australia trip thing. Like, um, but yeah, I'll, uh, I'll talk to you later about it. Like there's, there's other reasons I'm not like rushing to the airport. Uh, okay, nothing, fair. nothing horrible and personal. It's, it's stuff I could talk about, but I don't want to go down that road. So yeah. Cool. 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 All right. Well, let's move on to the next little piece. We got, uh, Oh, and just to remind everybody, Oh shit. It doesn't matter. Anybody in chat, um, guys, 
tomorrow is the last day to buy tickets from Blizzard. Blizzard also has something set up to where you can buy resold tickets later uh, through a site that they set up. Um, all that information will be in the show notes. So just letting you guys know. I, I, I want to say to everyone, by the way, like I know I'm sitting here absolutely fucking dumping on this event, but I hope you heard the part where I'm like, still go. It is still a lot of fun. It's still worth it because you get to be with 35,000 people who have similar interests to you. It is a phenomenal gathering. Just the event itself that I'd like to shit on. Don't read as like, this is Josh being super negative on, you know, heading to fucking Anaheim and going to BlizzCon. If you've oh. never done it, please go and do it. Yeah. Josh has talked about on his podcast, Countdown Classic, many times about just the beautiful ex experiences he had with different people and everything. So yeah, I'm assuming Josh, if you lived in the continental United States and a ticket was 300 bucks, like, you know, tops, like I'm sure it would be oh, a different I'd, choice. I'd, I'd go every year if it wasn't a big deal to get there. Yeah. hundred percent. It's easy because yeah, like, I think it was it's a three hour flight time. instead of well, 20 yeah. hours. Exactly. Like it would be for you guys. I go like, all right, wait, so it's 200 bucks for a flight. Yeah. Too easy. I'll book a hotel room for fucking two nights. And then it's just like, I'll go get shit faced at the Marriott for two nights. And the whole thing has cost me, I don't know, like a thousand bucks. And I've had three great days. I'm out of there. Yep. 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 Yeah. And we fly home, you know, two and a half hours and we're back home sleeping in our bed. And honestly, I travel enough for work. Our hotel and our fights are pretty much free. So. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Um, okay. So, yeah. The next thing is just to let you guys know, Brawl with the Blues was going to be, I think, today, but they've moved it to August 4th. So you heard that whole talk about us talking about vanilla PvP and making a level 60 character and getting the good gear and getting to, like, play all this and try it all out. It's obviously got to be available again by August 4th uh, for them to do the brawl with the blues. So um, if you guys want to be in on that, it'll be at 2 p.m. Pacific, which is 5 p.m. Eastern on August 4th. So you guys should definitely check that out. Information will be in the show notes. Have you guys ever done one? Mm -mm. Uh, I did the brawl with the blues on the wrath one, uh, um, which was pretty fun because... Uh, Jordy got uh, recognized a ton, and then like two people were like, "And hey, please, Bob's here too." So I felt mm. cool for a bit, but it was the Isle of Conquest brawl with the blues. Okay, I I I and really I want to try Ale. and get in on I this. Killed line. Ale. Oh, very good. Oh very yeah, good. I got shot over the wall because like you could do that in this BG. Like I I only played it then, but I got shot over the wall as the rogue. Ale was there on his freaking mage. And I freaking killed him. And then I was like, dude, I think totally I just killed it. you. And he was like, Mage? I was like, yeah. Yeah, I was the rogue that got you behind the walls. He was like, I could just feel his face was like, betrayal. <laughs> but it was, it was so much fun. Oh, good stuff. Yeah, I'll have to try and get in on this one. I'd love to... Um... I'd love to fuck around with people like, you know, Josh and Tim and Morgan and stuff. It'd be good fun. Yeah, yeah, it, yeah. it was good. I, I got to kill... No, it wasn't Aramis. Aramis was on my team. I got to kill I got to kill a few different people that I recognize the names. But I wouldn't want to kill Aramis because I love him. So <laughs> um but yeah, okay, so yeah, that's that's that. Um there is a whole bunch of notes for both the hardcore uh PTR and the PTR that's testing the honor system. I don't know that I want to go through them all, but is there any that jump out to you guys you'd want to talk about? I think the only really notable one is that dungeon experience one for hardcore. That's the one that I thought of too. Okay, so uh, additional uh, adjustments were made to XP gains in dungeons on WoW Classic Hardcore Realms. Non-boss enemies will now grant 50% of their base XP value. Um, Josh, can I get you to read the notes here? Because you do it so much more eloquently than me. <laughs> All right. Hang like on, the uh, dev Nick notes Dundee here. Accent. Well, that's not a knife. This is a knife. Really? Yeah, you fucking call that a knife. <laughs> but, um, 
I see you've played Knifey Spoony before. All right, so <laughs> where are we? Uh, <clears throat> Additional adjustments were made to experience gain in dungeons on WoW Classic Hardcore Realms. Non-boss enemies will now grant 50% of their base experience value. Developers notes. After playing on the PTR ourselves and evaluating feedback from testers, we agree that getting zero experience from non-boss enemies doesn't feel great mm-hmm. and has practical implications in that many player abilities that require killing enemies that grant experience or honor don't function for most of the dungeon. As a result, we've toned down the amount of experience that bosses give slightly and also restored partial experience gain to all the other enemies in the dungeon. We feel that this should be sufficient to prevent dungeon spam groups that avoid boss kills from being an optimal way to level, but not be as punishing as legitimate dungeon groups in hardcore. I tried to do my best, like, United Airlines pre-flight announcement there, Mel. Yeah, you did great. Yeah. Yeah, Please buckle your seatbelts. We're taking off shortly. Yeah, yeah. If you're going to spew, spew into this. (laughs) (laughs) So I think think this is great because, okay, so give people a little bit of insight and I might be I might be wrong, but I believe the zero XP for non boss enemies in the dungeons was done to stop people because the way it works in the hardcore realms is you have a twenty four hour lockout, like you can only do one dungeon a a day, uh, one each dun- each dungeon of each once dungeon, day. yeah. And so basically. They didn't want people pre- forming 60, a group. Pre- yeah, yeah, pre yeah, pre 60. And the only way you get saved to the dungeon is you kill the first boss. And right. so therefore they were f- afraid that maybe dungeon groups would form where they would go in, kill the trash, reset, go back in, yeah. kill the trash. Yeah, people worked it out very over quickly. and over. Yeah. And so basically they're like they're kind of going back on that a bit and being like, if you want to do this, it is a way to do it, but it's definitely significantly now slower than doing it questing because they want yeah. you to the open world. They're just trying to find the Goldilocks situation here. So basically, what happened was, you know, we've got a, a un, like a slightly uh, different version of hardcore than what people have been playing on Bloodsail Buccaneers. Um, you know, we had uh, um, limitations before that now aren't in place, but now we've just got this 24-hour thing. So people have been like, all right, maybe we might just, you know, spam dungeons and level up that way, and that's a nice and easy way to level 60 on hardcore. So they started out just killing, um, you know, d- just basically going in there and spamming. Blizzard said, all right, we'll put all the experience in the boss and take it away from the trash. And then people were saying, like you said, like, you know, this feels like shit. So they're trying to find that happy medium now. Of And, and I think, look, hopefully this is the fix. Um, I know a lot of people honest, want to say, yeah, go Mel. Can we just, can we just like stop kidding ourselves here? Legit, all they're doing here is spreading out the same amount of experience that they were giving you for the bosses onto the trash but because these pretty little butterflies don't want to kill things and not get experience they have put it onto everything else right and i i feel like that's the issue is that people just aren't looking at it in the large picture of things right like sure you're not getting experience from killing every single mob that you're killing throughout the dungeon but you're getting a lot more experience from killing the boss that you kill than you would have gotten would you rather have gotten 10 experience from every mob or a thousand experience from the boss right like and i could be wrong it could be different they could be getting more experience now and i get that it's not satisfying to see your experience go up as you're killing a bunch of trash mobs and that's frustrating and but i i do feel like this is i i mean people will still spam dungeons because they're going to be easier i agree with what you're saying um it it does seem like making a mountain out of a molehill to a certain extent where it's like you're getting the experience either way. What what do you fucking care in which way it's delivered? Um, I I do appreciate that the Blizzard is trying to satiate, and I think I've said that. That's the drinking game for this episode. I've said that like three times. <laughs> um, trying to sort of help the player base out by you know doing the little things that make WoW feel good. Like you do, I agree. You get that that one one thousandth of a dopamine hit when you see the experience come up when you kill an enemy, no matter what it is. Um, so 
I, I don't really care either way. Look, if they put all the experience in the boss, it didn't bother me personally. But mm. I think as long as you hit that point where, and again, I feel bad because this is like, people are like, don't tell me how to play the game. What do you care how I get to 60 on a hardcore, ser- hardcore server, blah, 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 blah. The point is to not create a min max avenue to 60 that's ridiculous on a hardcore server there people say oh well dungeons are still dangerous i could die in a dungeon yeah you could but if it becomes blatantly clear that like this is a simple path to 60 it defeats the purpose of this server in a certain regard so right and they're more predictable right dungeons are more predictable i feel like than the open world and dungeons the more time you do them like it would be the same thing if I could do the same quest over and over and over again, right? Like, I remember dungeon grinding in TBC to 70, and I did it because it was the best way to get to 70 quickly, and everybody wanted us to get to 70 quickly. It was the most miserable time ever. It, it was the worst. Ass. It sucked. I did not want to do another dungeon to save my life. Ugh, and the and people I we did it with, like- I really liked, and I was, like, so done with hanging out <laughs> with them by the time it was over. I was just like, yeah. which we is so weird for me, because, like, Josh... You like to solo. I love to play with people and I love to just like oh sit there and just play with people. And like, I was done. I was <laughs> done. Yeah. So done. I, and I, I don't it, think I, I hooked, with hung Hunk. out with those three people for like three weeks. <clears throat> and, I did it with Hunk and we, we were like, fuck off for, the, for a month. I don't want to talk to you. Dude, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> One of them was a friend that I had had for like 15 years like in real life, like, and I was just like, we're not hanging for a bit. Time apart. Yeah. We're not yeah. hanging for a bit. Don't join my discord. Yeah. It was the sweatiest thing I've ever done. And oh. as weird as this sounds, one of my greatest regrets in life, I have very few regrets in my life. And so that's pretty good if that's up there on the list, but right? doing that, that first week of TVC was one of the dumbest things and one of the biggest regrets ever. Dude, same. We did. Yeah. It, it, was, it, was awful. it was hilarious. Cause Mel and I went into wrath we're like, okay, you're a priest. I'm a warrior. I built my block set so I could just do the crazy damage and, and like solo or duo dungeons. We did three Utgard Pinnacles and we're like, fuck this. Nope. Do, you, do you want to go quest? Mm. I'm but so do done you with remember, this. <laughs> do you remember a lot of this came about? Like there was a lot of hype coming into the launch of TBC. And oh God, I feel so bad because I've forgotten the content creator. but. You know, there was a decent content creator that created this really, really well put together dungeon guide of the path from 60 to 70 um, and the most optimal um, way to do it. It caught fire. Everyone in the fucking world watched this guide. It was. And everyone was like, this is what we're doing. We're doing this guide. We're doing this guide. Everyone was doing this guy's guide. And like, I don't necessarily begrudge the guy for factually stating what the most efficient way to 70 is if you want to dungeon grind that's fine to get that info out there begin again coming back to our conversation about the battleground thing the players obsessions with being the best the first the most efficient i am the greatest world of warcraft player of all fucking time we all followed the guide rather than just doing what we fucking wanted to do well if you looked into it though you were crazy not to because the way it worked, and then we all like, hated the game and hated our friends. I know, yeah. we hated it, but like, <laughs> but like the the way that they designed it is like you could get up to honored in the dungeon and then be able to come back and get the rest of what you needed from doing quests in the zone. So you'd go get honored in each of the different. Uh, each of the different reps and this was required to get into the actual raids because you had to have all of these done and be able to do all the heroics so the other option was you level up having a good time you know like and then having quests later. and then you have to do a billion dungeons at level 80 you know to get yeah, like yeah. it was such a catch 22 of like okay that's fair Oh, it sucks. TBC is a bit of a norm. TBC yeah. is a bit yeah. of an anomaly in that regard. Yeah, yeah. So when Wrath came out, I was like, "We don't have to do this, Mel. Let's just go. Like this sucks. Let's oh, just yeah. go quest." And we had a blast working up. We had just absolute blast in Wrath working up. Dude, we would dungeon grind with our little team, and then afterwards, you know, we had been dungeon grinding for hours, and I'd be like, 
Bobby, can we just go do a free quest? I just need to do something else in this game to remind me why I am playing this game. Because right now, I would like to put it away and never open it up again. Well, and we <laughs> and we were forced to do that because we went from 40-man raid to 25-man raid. And we needed to make sure that we were going to get into the raid group. You know, like the, the guild thing, raid group. It was horrible. We were forced to do that. We were not forced we, to we do that. We were forced if we, we wanted chose. to get into the raid group. No, 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 no. We made a decision. We chose to do that because... In our minds, it was more beneficial to not enjoy leveling and to be in the end game with our guild, right? Like, that was not forced upon us by anybody but ourselves. Yeah, true. We forced that upon ourselves. Like, we had a choice. There was plenty of people that leveled lower and still got into the rig groups. And we did that to ourselves. And that's the mentality. And I feel like no matter who you are... There are times where you like if you're a gamer, like there are times where you're going to spiral into this like as North, tunnel vision mentality. As <laughs> and, North has said it many times and he quotes it from Sid Meier, players will min max the fun out of your game. That's hmm? what we've what we've found with the Internet, because like before. Before, if if information was so widely available like we'd figure stuff out it was a different time and i know people hate questing i love questing questing is like one of my most fun things and honestly i was really loving diablo because it was like a like just a big quest like i just kept getting to quest right and then we get into the season and they're like yeah you should just grind dungeons i was like no no that's not what I signed up for. No, no. You still, yeah, you still want to do the dungeon. side quests. You still want to do the side quests at D4, mm. I think. Yep. That's what I keep telling you so that we can keep doing them. Well, yeah, it's not the most efficient, but like, I mean, we're not going to be like going for anything big in Diablo. We're just having a good time yeah. with it. I love questing. <laughs> okay. Oh, well, yeah. Okay. So yeah, that, that, that was the, that was the big change. And yeah, I think, yeah, if people want to just go ahead and grind that part, then I just, I really don't care how people like, are you, are you like this too, Josh? Like, I don't care how people do the hardcore challenge. Like let them do what the fuck they want to do. Don't hate on them. If you want to do something harder then you do it. Like I'll probably do solo self uh, self found, but I'm not pigeonholing myself into saying I'm for sure going to do that. Like, mm -hmm. but I've enjoyed doing that. So I know it's something I enjoy, but I don't, but like, who cares? Like let people have the fun that they want to have. Yeah. Mm. I, um, I don't really want to get too deep into it because I've talked about it. Like I did like a half an hour rant a couple of weeks ago on my show about it, but you and I are actually on very opposing sides of the field on this one. Bob. Really? Um, I am the asshole and I'm like, uh, whether you like it or not, the hardcore should have been done a different way for uh, long-term success. Um, I think that in trying to appeal to everyone in the way that they've done it, it's great for the now but this thing will get old real quick when people realize because people just want a fresh server. They really do. I think half the appeal of this hardcore server that we've got is that it's fresh. Um, when people wise up to the fact that it's kind of just like another world of Warcraft server with the, yeah, don't get me wrong. That is a unique twist that when you die, you die. But I don't think it's enough to differentiate itself from a regular WoW server. When you had a real opportunity to do something like a, an actual spin-off. Have it like be a completely different flavor and context of World of Warcraft um, that would have given it longevity and like had people coming back over the years going like, oh yeah, I think I'll go like have fuck around on hardcore. Um, I personally just think this will, this thing will be dead in a few months. Um, but you, know, you think that, though mm -hmm. to argue that? Do you think though that they set it up in a way? for longevity and for expansion, right? Because in my mind, they've set it up in a way that this is now possibly able to be its own type of realm, right? Like when you play Diablo, you can play hardcore, you can play in the season or you can play eternal, right? And now 
potentially in a year you could log into Dragonflight and you could play or whatever the latest is and you can play PvE, PvP or hardcore, right? Like you can pick your server based on that. And I think potentially there is more longevity in it if it has some sort of appeal and desire and if it goes well. I think it's it's a different prism we look at this through when we think of what's to come with World of Warcraft. So the the problem for hardcore that is unique to World of Warcraft and not Diablo is that Cataclysm's right around the corner. SOM2 is mm -hmm. right around the corner. Um, a retail expansion is right around the corner. All of these, you know, you could almost even call them Competing. competitors. Yeah. Uh, yeah, competitors are coming for hardcore servers. So that's when hardcore needed to be like, this is what we have to differentiate ourselves from those servers. But it doesn't have anything to differentiate itself outside of when you die, you die. Now, don't get me wrong. That's a big one. That's a big little, you know, interesting thing. I don't think it's enough when they had an opportunity when like, this thing got popular for a fucking reason and they deleted most of the reasons that it got popular for. Now, I know people like to shit on a lot of people who are now happy that hardcore is going to be the way it is. Love to shit on solo self found. Let me play the way I want to play. Bob, I'm not being personal with you, but I understand that like there is a gatekeepiness to what I'm saying, but I'm not trying to control people as much as be like, you have to understand that a lot of the the reason this thing got popular and that people had fun is the unique nature of the limitations. It was pretty fucking crazy, and yet it still blew up. If mm -hmm. if it was so bad, if it was so fucking horrible, oh my god, this is an MMO. Why can't I play an MMO? All of these fucking dungeon limitations, all of these solo self found limitations. This is fucking stupid. Why did it get popular? Why the fuck did it blow up? It should have been nothing. Sorry, Bob, I'm getting aggro, but that's not a you. Oh, okay. No, but to be so, honest, I, I agree with you. Hold on. Let me just okay, good, type good. in one thing here and then you can come in. Um, I agree with you that I, I do think that the attraction, at least for me, right? I did not think I was going to like hardcore. I was like, this sounds stupid. Yeah, I didn't think so either. Right? Forever. It took me. I joined in for so many reasons of the restrictions is why I liked it. Right. It wasn't just that I couldn't die. Now, that was a big part of it. <laughs> But also that I couldn't buy gear. Like I had to figure out like how to make myself valuable with gear. I found out there was somebody who sold wands in Iron Forge, right? I didn't yeah, know that. the shit you never know. You're like, holy shit, and I can buy a weapon that's an upgrade. Oh my god. Bags were so valuable, right? Like things like things like that made it even more fun. And you were more committed and you were more, you know, I don't know, beneficial to the community. But it didn't like solo self found. I feel like people say that in a way that makes it negative. And at the same point, there was a larger community base in hardcore than I feel like there isn't just as many other communities, right? There, it wasn't everybody playing on their own, not talking to anybody else. But I don't know. I also feel like Blizzard took a step and maybe they should have taken a bigger step. But I, I feel like having the servers where if you die, you go away is the first step. I think that you might be right. It might ruin it for everybody because people will find a way to min max the hardcore servers and figure out how to, you know, get through it without dying and then do whatever they want. Um, but I do think that was a big barrier in why they made a lot of the rules in hardcore originally, right? Was because everybody else wasn't playing hardcore. Everybody That's else yep. wasn't, you know, playing by the same rules. So you had to make additional things that would affirm that you actually did it yourself and you didn't have yeah. somebody just carry you through. To make it yep. worthwhile. And I want to yeah. clarify. Oh, did you, yeah. did you do what no, 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 no. I, I just, I, I do want to answer something to that, but Here, I, you, I'm not sure if yeah, I should do it now. You or go, wait for your you go, you go, you go. Okay. Just on that point, Mel, um, it's, there are two things that are raised the most by the people that are happiest with hardcore servers being the way they are on official. And that's the first of them. Um, the only reason those limitations exist were because of, because of administrational problems with, with separating non-hardcore players and hardcore players on Blood Sail Buccaneers. Completely understand, completely accept that. My, my only issue with when pay, uh, players raise that point is that 
just just because the rules came about because of a scenario that doesn't exist anymore and is not a problem. Just just because the the birthplace of the rules was a, a weird or awkward or you know even wrong one or whatever doesn't change the fact that the rules still became you know accepted and enjoyed by a large amount of players so like i refer to it i refer to it as a happy accident it was a very very happy accident that the limitations went as far as they did because obviously the hardcore community didn't actually want a lot of those limitations in originally i'm sure that had the opportunity come up they would have just done a death equals delete server and that would have been it and that's fine but again by this happy accident They've had to go harder and somehow tripped and fallen over into this really unique, fun experience that people went like, oh, hey, like this is kind of cool. And you can still keep those rules disregarding why they came about. Do you know what I mean? For sure. For sure. Okay. All right. So let me clarify something. I have two hardcore 60s, one solo, Rogue. And one duo druid. Um, I think the duo druid was way easier, but I also think if I would have played druid solo, it would have been way easier than the rogue too. I think I (laughs) should have done them the opposite. But either way, I did those with the app. No up, no appeal. I've got both characters on wrath servers now. Unfortunately, I didn't move them to be able to raid on, uh, you know, on blood cell, but. I have the uh the it's not an achievement, but it's a like like what it's called of strength that's that says I got to level sixty without without dying. It's a feat of strength. I personally am not gonna look at your non solo self found achievement of getting sixty and hardcore. I'm not going to really like I per like me. Like, I'm not going to look at it and be like, damn, you did good. I'm just going to be like, hey, that's cool. You did something, right? And that's <laughs> okay, though, because the majority of people never hit 60 in hardcore. Like, the vast majority of people never hit it. And But isn't that the longevity? But, but, isn't that what gives it longevity? Yes, right? yes, yes. But what I'm saying is I think the add-on's still going to be there. People could still do that challenge like but do we need to force that on everybody i don't know about that like there could be other cool things that come about with blizzard not jumping in and putting too too much stipulation on everything right off the bat like they they come in slow and if you still want to do solo self-found i know you can beat the app like in some ways yes like but you know, the people that really want to prove it to somebody are going to stream every second that they're on. So I don't. Okay, yeah. So here's the thing. I just don't know that it's I, bad to lock those other people out that want to do it in a different way. That's a little bit easier. OK, so I have a, a lot of bit easier, a little bit of a split opinion here. Right. Because I, I do. I agree with both of you. I agree that I think that locking people into a certain mode does seem a little like, you know, not necessary and you know just because i want to play a certain mode and then i agree with josh because i i do feel like there are a lot of things about the way that hardcore is run right now that i do think brought me more in love with that game mode and i feel like if given the choice we all know like we have all experienced if given a choice are you going to take the hard route or the easy route to get to the same conclusion you're going to take the easy route right And so I feel like there's a lot of people that aren't even going to try the harder route that a lot of us have gone through on just playing hardcore on a era server. People aren't going to choose that route because it's harder and they can get to the same conclusion. But they're not getting to the same conclusion. Like people will still be like, oh, okay, cool. You did that. Yeah, you did that non-solo cell phone. You did it without the app. Oh. Cool, cool. Right. Good job, guy. But how enticing do you think it would be? Like, say there was a hardcore server and I haven't like I've been on Bob's boat of like, yeah, like I don't care how people play. Like, I'm glad it's death delete. Right. But I also agree that 
there is an enticement in getting people to play the mode that we played and being like, look at how fun this is, right? Like, I get it. There's no oh, auction I see, house. I, I see get what you're that there's saying. no mailbox. Like, but come and try this and see how exciting this is, how entertaining it is to pick up a six slot bag and be like, oh, whoa, I am rolling right now. Right. Yeah, like, I, I agree with you. So, Mel, let me, can I just no, keep going? Yeah. Do you mind if I keep going with that point? Because also, yeah. Bob, I can fucking hear you pulling your punches and I don't want you to come at me. Okay. <laughs> um, I'm serious. No, I, can fucking I, dude, handle I am, fine. dude, I, I really think the way to play it is the, Cargo's way, the solo self, like what, what the community, not just, I should just say Cargo's, but like all the mods in the hardcore community, all the people that worked hard, Winky, Grays for Days, Cricks, all these people that like, that did it. I think that is the best way. I just don't feel like I should push that on others if they might, because they might come in, make a hardcore, and then they're like, guys, dude, I got hardcore at 60. And then people will be like, yeah, but did you do it solo self found? Yeah, good, good so, job. And then they might try the next thing when they never would have tried it before, maybe. Like, that's all I'm saying. So here's, his, we'll carry on from Mel's point, and, and it'll lead into my larger point about, remember I said there's two things that, people always regurgitate that are happy with this. I'll get to the second of those two soon. Um, Mel is right, in my opinion, to raise the point of the appeal of winning people over to something different and saying, hey, look, I know that you're used to your regular old World of Warcraft, but, you know, have you considered just trying this something new rather than, you know, changing the niche to become the generic? So it really is diving in on this point of a niche way of playing the game right and i'm trying to uh, tackle this and 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 josh g and i disagree on this greatly i think and and i i i know obviously it's going to be a, a hard argument to have <laughs> given the 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 interest in external interest involved there but um maybe they're not as big a factor as i i sort of think they might be but what i'm getting at is um you had an opportunity to cater to a developing niche uh, slice of the, the the player base, right? They have organically deviated themselves from the pack. They've said, we have developed a really quirky way of playing this game that is, again, I'm going to stress the word niche, and we're enjoying it. And then we watch this small slice grow and grow and grow over time as the niche became more popular it never became more popular than the the regular way of playing the game but the the no. word on the street grew about the niche and there was something to it okay that's cool that's great so the problematic part has has become that the larger slice of the plot the pie has looked at the niche and said but we don't like to play that way. Do it our way. And this is why I really don't like the gatekeepy term continuing to be raised <laughs> because it flies both ways. We're both staring at each other as gatekeepers saying, you play my way. No, you play my way. It's, it's less gatekeeping and just subjective opinions on what makes this a more fun server. But that's the point. And we've touched on this slightly is... Hardcore is about the fucking journey. It's less about the feat. Nobody, right. nobody really gives a fuck. Nobody really, really, truly gives a fuck that you got to 60 on a hardcore server. It's cool. It's kind of cool. But There's like, very uh, few people that will raid. Like, that's a... Yeah. Not, not a goal. <laughs> I don't think you're an amazing human being for getting to 60 on a hardcore server, right? It is a cool thing to do. But like, it's about that journey. And what did the niche server had? It had a fucking fun journey. And how did it produce that? Well, it created odd little interactions with the environment where now all of a sudden you can't use the auction house. You can't use the, the you can't trade with other players. Oh, fuck me. How does that change things? Well, now every fucking item that drops from a mob, you are paying a lot of attention to and losing your mind if you get something that is good and applicable to your character. All of those, when we, it, 
it kills me because we spoke with like, you know, the players, the mods, the devs all about this while Hardcore was on Blood Sale going, how good does it feel when you get that two-hander drop for you at level 13, when you get the bags drop for you, when you get all, oh, the blue dropped at level 29? Fucking here we go, baby. It made you feel like you were playing the game differently and it felt right. um, good. It's now really we've deleted good. that. We've looked at that and we said, how good was that? Let's fucking delete it. But we can still do that, though. Okay, but here's right? the thing. No, no, let no, me, no, let no, me no, argue no, this no, point a little bit. I'll say, you go, Mel, then I'll come back to Bob. Yeah, let me argue this point a little bit is because, so I do agree, is that this is the way that we fell in love with the game, right? However, I do think that it still was a very large, small community, right? <laughs> um. It, it got very popular, but it still did not have the reach that it could have, right? And a lot of that was because it was, you know, you had to have this add-on, you had to do all of this, right? But n the servers that Blizzard's making are only assisting in continuing that community. So that community can still continue to go exactly as they have been going with the add-on, and they can do everything that they want to do. And the benefit of it, I think that you can get by not gatekeeping it so much in that way. And I know you hate that word. So, but by not limiting the possibilities is that some people may be able to say, hey, okay, I'm going to try it just in my own way. They do it their way. And then they're like, hey, that was a lot of fun. I think I'm going to try it this way. Right. And in a year, we may say like, everybody's doing it this way and let's just go with this way. or Maybe that falls off. Maybe we realize that everybody was just doing it that way because that was the only option. And as much as we love it and as much as we've had fun with it, maybe maybe it falls off and people are like, hey, I really actually prefer to do it with the auction house. I don't think that's going to happen, I, but yeah. I don't know. Yeah, that's right? exactly what I'm thinking, too. Like, maybe we do find something cool in this. I doubt it. But maybe, you know, like there's just been so many cool things that have been found out throughout classics, you know, like time, like there's been crazy different things found out. And I mean, yeah, this just grew from classic the, too. The problem, you know? the problem with this situation is we do know the answer, but we're choosing to put on the horse blinders and not look at it because we all fucking know what happens when you open up the auction house and the trading, what comes with it? Bots. Hi, gold buying. We are a community obsessed with buying gold. We I just can't argue about with how that. The modern I can't gamer, argue with that at all. The modern gamer wants to beat you at all fucking costs, and they don't care what it costs them personally. I so can't argue we with had that at again. all. What was the, what was one of the, and I'm going to get fired up again. Don't take this personally, guys, but like, again, oh, dude, Josh, we had, Josh, you are, oh, this is your, <laughs> this is your stage. Do what you want. We, Let him go. we had one of the beautiful, uh, unintended, uh, happy accidents of hardcore on blood sale where they deleted the, to the, the trading in the auction houses. And what did that do as an, maybe an unintended result? The first pure server that we've had in years. There are no bots here. There is no gold buying because we fucking taken it. I say we, they, obviously the good people who developed everything, they've taken it off the table. And everyone was like, fuck, man. Um, I don't want to say something weird, but this feels a little more like 2004 than, than Classic did in 2019. This is like a pure experience. And everyone was saying, how good is this? How good is this? So what do we do with an official server? Delete it. Fucking delete it. Here comes auction houses and trading, baby. Great. Okay, so there's another massive positive that everyone loved about hardcore that we've wiped off the table. Now, I want to come back to the second point that everyone loves to raise that both of you guys have brought up because this is cor you're correct to raise it and you're so right to say <laughs> it. Um, and that point is you can still do your stupid solo cell found thing on the official server. Why are you being <laughs> such a fucking weirdo with making everyone do it with you? I'm very glad you raised that point. Let me tell you why I bring it up again, coming back to part of the, like a lot of the appeal of hardcore on blood sale Buccaneers was the journey, the journey, the journey, the mm -hmm. journey. We don't give a fuck. If you get to 60, it's about the fun you have along the way. So, what happens along the way? Well, it becomes a collective struggle. 
the interactions that you had with your guild on Blood Sale, with all of the players on that fucking server, were unique to the rule set because of the boundaries within which you had to play, right? You were all doing the same thing. You were, you knew that that person next to you was fucking struggling just as much as you were. <laughs> the, the, the well, ex except for Season of Mastery, where the people on See, I didn't our level server like wanted to kill us because we uh, we we wouldn't group up with them for group quests, like. There were there were some angry people, but yeah, but yeah, I get what blood but, but sale is about definitely hardcore, different. Obviously, yeah, yeah, it's yeah. About hardcore. So like, there is this like beautiful weird bubble built up about this community where like the death alerts would come up all the time. So and so dies at level twenty. Oh, I know that that guy just got a blue a level ago. No, <laughs> like he must be spewing. <laughs> And it was just this, like I said, it's like we're all holding hands together. Even though we're not really grouping, even though we're only doing one dungeon, you know, you can only do fucking, um, you know, stockades once or whatever. Even mm. though we're not like um, grouping together, we are playing together as a group, if that makes sense, because we are enduring the same issues. Right. Take that away and you have removed a lot of the odd fun that the collective struggle brings it is going to be everyone yeah you go bob sorry no you're right though it is going to be hard because like you didn't want to group with anybody unless they were doing you know the hardcore challenge but now how do you know if they're doing the hardcore i guess i think the app like the app you should if you're in a group with them you should be able to see like their percentage maybe the, with the add-on, but yeah, that does but make it a little different. Advocate, though, here, to play devil's mm. advocate, though, I feel like you have to also look at the fact that these rules came into place by accident, right? And they made it wonderful, and we all very much enjoyed it. But on the same note, who's to say what rules won't be able to be developed and created and imagined if we're in a different type of environment, right? Sure, and but 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 the rules you're playing with, Mel, sorry, sorry, you, you finish. No, I go. Really no, 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 I'm I was good. Just gonna say, because the argument, I've said this a lot, the argument flies both ways where you point at the solo mm -hmm. self-found player and say, you can still do that, dickhead. But then the solo <laughs> self-found player can still point back at you and go, but you can still do what you want to do. Go play on a normal server and just delete your character when it dies. Right. That's fair. Yeah. And, and that is fair. And I think that there are certain things that come from being on a, non on a server that you don't have to delete your character if it dies right when you're trying to play hardcore because at least on season of mastery when i played hardcore there were a lot of people that were not hardcore players that one got frustrated with you about that and two i think it enabled griefers a lot more because they didn't have the same thing to lose as you right like they could die and call it a day and make you die and i think that that aspect of it is very helpful. Just having the server that is no, no deaths. Right. But at the same time, I do agree that I was forced to play a certain way and I enjoyed it a lot more than I ever thought I would. So I think at this point we're, we're playing the long game if this is mm -hmm. what it is. Right. Because we're saying, here's what we're going to start with. And the question is, are we going to lose momentum because we start with it this way and then try to expand and develop on it? Or is it going to become better because we start with it open and then try to expand and develop on it? This is where I kind of bury in on, because you've made this point a few times, Mel, and I'm really nodding along and agreeing with you. This is where you back the power of the niche that's being created, where it's like, why are we trying to open it up to the masses rather than going like, fuck, this thing worked. Maybe if we convinced more people that it was worth giving it a try, we would win more people over. And like, right. even if it started small, you've still established this server that is so different to anything else on offer. You You've obviously approached the hardcore mods. You've expressed an interest in their product. You clearly know it's good. Back it, back it, rather than drastically changing right. it. But I don't even know if everybody in the hardcore community or everybody in the hardcore mod community even agrees that there should oh, be all the don't. gatekeeping. They probably don't. You know? I'll, get a, I'll get a lot of hate for this. Everyone, uh, oh, I no. Take it. Honestly, like, I, 
I can't decide what my opinion is, right? I, I guess I can see both sides. If it were just me, I would say I want to play the hardcore rules the way that I played them before. And that was the best experience that I've had. Um, yeah. And I would want other people to experience that. I guess thinking from a more business aspect from the Blizzard standpoint or thinking from a more, you know, someone who hasn't played hardcore, what would get them into it? I guess that's where my thought process varies, right? Yeah. Is how do we appeal to all of those? And honestly, it doesn't really benefit Blizzard at all to appeal to everybody, right? Because most of the people that play hardcore play hardcore right now, right? Anybody else that comes in to play hardcore, you're not going to get a ton of people that have never played the game to come in and play hardcore WoW Classic. Like, that's not your target audience, right? The people yeah. you're targeting are the people that are already playing the game, right? Who already pay a subscription. So there's there's no monetary value in it for Blizzard at this point, right? Unless they make it something almost different, right? Well, that well, doesn't that entice new players. That's my main point. And I don't want people to think that like, look, I'm going to play these hardcore servers. I'm going to enjoy them. Like, you know, it's all good. I'm not sitting here saying like fucking boycott hardcore because it's not what I yeah. want, blah, blah, blah. But you've, you've basically summed up my whole thing, which is I just think that there was a better financial option there for blizzard they mm -hmm. they've played the short game rather than backing themselves on the long game because this thing and maybe it was intended to be a flash in the pan in between now and som 2 maybe it's doing exactly what it was intended to do but like if you'd made something unique maybe you could still pull people over to it even in the face of Kata and Som 2 and the next retail expansion. Because like my thinking is that when all those things come, this version of hardcore is going to be like the ghost town that was classic era servers once TBC came out. Do you know what I mean? Like nobody's yeah, going to play people, hardcore. How many people do you think are actually playing hardcore right now that – don't play one of the other versions of the game. I am I would need to hear more from the people who are more in tune with the hardcore community. My understanding right. is that there is a large portion of players in the hardcore community that just, that's them now. They love this style of gameplay so much. They're right. not playing Wrath. They're not playing Era. They're playing hardcore and they fucking right. love it. And, oh, yeah. and I think that's great. That's cool. Yeah. Um, so yeah, that, I mean, it's just, it's like, it's it's like releasing classic fresh like releasing classic servers in 2019 after like you know you built something for that crowd but then making it like um drastically different to what we got do you know what i mean like right it's, yeah it, but i really have to kind of i'm fuck i'm all fired up bob you're in trouble now um <laughs> I, I kind of want to like have a go at like grace for days in chat because yeah. like we we see should on that we, point that we were talking about before we, that naivete popping in again about like Grays is saying, and you guys said it as well. I'm excited to see what auction houses and trading brings. Maybe it'll bring a whole new meta to hardcore and this even better way of playing the game that we never could have foreseen. <laughs> I'm fucking telling you, we know where this road goes and where for some reason, even though we've driven down that road before, we're acting like we haven't. And it's so naive to be like, oh, it'll be fucking great. I literally am in, I'm chatting to a fan of my show who is a bot guy who's like licking his lips going, I fucking can't wait to get my hooks into fucking hard. It's yeah, not, yeah, like I we mean, laugh, but it's yeah, not there, funny. There is no argument for that. The bot thing is a rough thing. I mean, should we see, should we get Grays I in mean, here? Bots can die though. Bots can die, but not the ones that they're going to make for hardcore. They've already, <laughs> test, they've already tested them. They've already tested them. They've done the routes. They've made it. They've made it to 30 without dying on the PTR. They've, they're nah. doing it now. Well, and, I mean, Blizzard could make things like, you know, I think North talked about it on your show about, like, having buffs that show you never use. Like, I wanted achievements for when you hit 60, never using auction house, never using mailbox. Like, but buffs would be kind of cool just to be able to see it in real time throughout the leveling process. Just to be able to like, okay, you've got the no mailbox buff. Okay, we're, we're cool. You've got the no auction house buff. Okay, cool, cool. Like, I thought that would be kind of cool. Um, But, yeah, like, I I just don't know. I think, like, in chat, who said it in chat? Um, 
It was a uh, shade 89. Like he said, Blizzard limiting dungeon lockouts was way more strict than I thought they would be, to be honest. And I, th I think that's true. Them getting rid of bubble hearth was more than I thought they were going to do. I was like pleading for him to do it. Right. But like when they did it, I was like, okay, well, I wasn't expecting that. Petri, I still want out of the game, but that's a whole dev different side subject. But yeah, like Blizzard seems to have done more than we would have thought they ever would have done. The The final point I would make on this, because obviously we want to talk about other stuff after yes, this, and yes. I've been on an epic rant, and you know I'll get a lot of hate for this one, but I'm sorry, guys. It's just how I feel. Call me the gatekeeper. I don't give a fuck. Um, at the end of the day... Blizzard walked up to a, you know, the the really wholesome 10-year-old girl selling lemonade at a lemonade stand, right, Bob? Huh? And they walk up to, and they see there's fucking 50 people in line to buy this lemonade, right, off this little girl. And they walk up to her and they go, fuck, hey, little girl, what are you putting in your lemonade? She goes, well, um, I use two lemons, a teaspoon of sugar, and I put in a little bit of coriander or something to give it that little extra twist. And they go, fuck, that's amazing. Hey, can we buy that recipe? Can we buy the right to sell your lemonade off you? Um, but we'll get rid of the coriander. We'll use half the lemons and we'll salt small, uh, serve it in like, you know, a bigger cup so it's a bit more diluted. And then their Pikachu face when the fucking line goes away. That's a really good analogy I can't argue with. You're, you're, uh, you're, uh, I think you're doing a little bit of lawy lawyering to me at the moment. <laughs> no, no, I'm not trying, I'm not trying to at no, all. Like I said, yeah, it's a watered I, down, but that's what I'm saying. Like me and the people that did it the other way, we're still going to want to do it the other way. Like, and if you do it that way and you want to brag about it to me, like, I'll be like, Hey, that's cool, dude. Mm. Great. Hey, as I say, job. part of the fun, part of the fun was because everyone was doing it and everyone who goes, you can still do that. Yeah. But you're robbing yourself of the fun that everyone was in on the collective struggle. Well, and as, con oh, here's, as here's my creators, argument, though. we need to like, we need to tell the, the masses that the way to do it is still solo self self found. Like, we need to Listen, do our fucking part. Fucking Josh convinced me. So now I'm annoyed. But no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> but I do agree that now I, I'm sitting here listening to this and I think, OK. At some point, I do agree that we love this game because of what it is, this game mode, because of what it is and everybody being able to do it not the way that we love it. Like, sure, they can do it and that's fine. But I, I don't feel like it's going to represent the hardcore experience that everybody fell in love with. Right. Mm -hmm. Like everybody fell in love with this hardcore experience and people like my argument was that maybe people would do it, be excited and then maybe like want to do it differently and like harder. I feel like that's not the case. I feel like people are just going to do it get to 60, be done with it, and now the longevity is gone, right? Because Some. Some. A but lot. Then, a lot then, of the new people that come in, that's what will happen, well, right? Because... They, but when they get to that point, they'll be like, guys, I got level 60. And then everybody they tell them be like, do you use the auction house? Do you use the mailbox? They'll be like, yeah. yeah. Did you group? Yeah. Yeah. And great, then they'll be bro, like, oh, great. Okay. You know, and then they'll but be I'm like, not, if I'm you not wanna... into that. I'm not into that dick measuring contest, though. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. Like, I don't, I don't, I don't like, um, I'm not, it feels, makes me feel queasy trying to tell people how to play the game. But like, isn't that, and I'm not a dev, obviously, but like, isn't that what devs basically do? Mm -hmm. They construct that, they tell players, hey, I've, I've made a game. And these are the rules and you go play it. And players, if they go like, oh, I don't like this or that. And the dev's like, trust me, what I've done is the fun way. You know, if you don't like it, you can go play another game. But I, I, I have faith that you will enjoy this game that I have designed. Devs are forcing their rules on players with every fucking game that ever comes out. So people yeah. go like, don't tell me how to play the game. Every fucking video game you're picking up every day, you're playing the way that someone is telling you how to play. I don't know. I mean, 
I think devs go into it thinking that and then find out really quick. There's a whole shit ton of people smarter than they are. At oh, things their can game. be changed. And things then, can be changed on the fly. Yeah, yeah. Well, and then they try to combat it, right? But like, I think like devs early on probably think that, and then as they go through the process of being in that career, realize, holy shit, we need to count on the player base because they're well, the yeah, ones but- that figure everything out. That's that's why we don't have real. Mm-hmm like real but generally beta tests speaking now though, right like we have beta speaking, tests like season one diablo 4 is a beta test because there's no way the devs could figure out what the player base was going to do and figure out and so i think devs are playing catch up most of the time you do need player input but generally speaking i think and the players don't like to hear this but generally in the industry it's thought of as if you're crowdsourcing the development of your game, you're doing it wrong. And I think, I think that everybody's doing it wrong now. Cause like literally you've got your early access uh, steam games, like literally the crowdsourcing is the new beta test across all of gaming, I think. And I think it's, it's because it's a hive mind. Like, There is no way you could know how people will break your game until you let everybody have it. Like private servers had a lot of stuff figured out, right? But they had no idea, like in Wrath, unholy, like coming out like with a bang like they did. Like they didn't know that. But because it was like a whole larger group of people and a hive mind was, was created when they brought out Classic Wrath... We found out Mm -hmm. all kinds of new Mm -hmm. shit that private servers hadn't figured out for the last decade. Mm. Can I give you my hottest take, though? Like, along those lines, can I give you my hottest take? You know how everyone always asks for the OSRS voting system with WoW Classic? Take take in mind. Hold on, hold on, hold on. What's OSRS? Sorry. The old school RuneScape, how they got the voting system. Uh, Okay, yes, yes, yes. 35% 35% plus of the player base vote for something it gets put in the game, right? Yeah, Yip was always in, a big proponent of that. Regard, yeah, yeah, a lot of people are big proponent of that. In regard to, let's say, a Season of Mastery 2 or a Classic Plus, right? Just in that regard. My hot take is like, if you introduced that voting system to a SOM 2, oh my God. that's an instant, instant ticket to ruining the game. Yeah, well, and how many show. bots are you going to have there? And now, Even forgetting the bots, let's presume it's all real yeah. players voting. Yeah. It's, well, a, it's just you're, you're buying a, a certainty to ruin a game. Well, Josh, 100%. have you even thought about this? Now that bots have chat G- GPT, like, have you seen the different RuneScape videos talking to, to bots where they actually like formulate like straight? No, no, no. But I mean, back I, and I, everything I, else. I'm it's saying, nuts. yeah, bots can. Bots can spoil things, but I'm saying even the players can't be trusted, Bob. Like, True. we are not game devs. And, like, also, when you, if you imagine if you opened up the WoW launcher and, mate, we're not just talking about the fucking freaks like us that haunt the subreddit all day and listen to podcasts <laughs> all day. And, you know, we're pretty fucking in tune with what's going on with the game. I hate to, you know, everyone knows this, but just to say it again, we are vastly outnumbered. And if you did a polling system for every Tom, Dick, Harry, and Jane who logs on to World of Warcraft to have their say on a fucking huge design decision, it is like, I just laugh. We could get into even, you would, we could get into the weeds the even more by saying like, that's why true democracies never work because you can't have the uneducated ruling like <laughs> That's uh, a deeper okay. conversation yeah, on yeah. democracy. We're going to go past that. We're going to go past that. We're going to go past that. Yep, yep. Never mind. I did not say that. Uh, we're just going to move on. But I agree that the player base does not exactly know what they want until they have it. And I think that that is Even I don't still know. somewhat of an argument as to why they didn't want to put too many limitations on the new hardcore servers. Now, I can see the other point of it, Josh, like I've said, and I... I do agree that I think that that is the best way to play the game as I know of it now. And And maybe, yeah, maybe you're right, Josh. Maybe the devs should have done that right off the bat because it's a proven formula that is known to work. Maybe you are right. Like, cause like 
like I'm pretty sure you were the same as me. I'm pretty sure I tried to like tell you to play hardcore before you were ready and willing. But Winky and Duranosaur tried to tell me to play it for a good year before I actually tried it. And then when I tried it, I was like, God damn it, you guys were fucking right. Okay, yes, I fucking <laughs> love this. This is awesome. Okay. But I always, like, said, hey, I love watching you guys do this, but uh, it's not for me. Yeah. my I'm the exact same, Bob. I was standoffish for so long. And, um, you know, you would describe hardcore to me, and I said, that sounds fucking stupid. Why would I ever play right. that? That's dumb. Same. And then, and then as soon as I tried it, I fucking loved it. But, like, the reason I'm... I'm not a hardcore enthusiast. I would I would struggle. I don't even know if I would say I love hardcore. I like hardcore, right? The reason that holds the main thing that holds me back from hardcore is I'm just kind of done with vanilla one times leveling rates. Like I I'm not going through that 150 hour journey to 60 on I'll, you know a bit of on a lark. You know, I'll what be I mean? honest, so, the two hardcore sixties that I had were in season of mastery where we did have X xp gains it felt good it felt yeah good. so i really hope they actually put like the season of mastery in like i don't think you should do the joyous journeys on top but like the initial xp gain that they changed i think really was good yeah my my first serious hardcore character is still alive at 37 that i've abandoned because i like i'm not doing it i'm not fucking doing that 40 to 60 journey i'm i i, I just like if it's not like for realsies, you know, on like a SOM 2 or something, I'm not fucking doing it. Yeah, there's too much grinding. Like, quests are quests are fun. I'm sorry, quests are fun. Grinding is not fun. Like, mm -hmm. unless you're doing a mage, like, AoE farm, where, like, you're, you know, you're doing something really cool, like, kiting the mobs, like, keeping them grouped, like, you're doing something like that. Grinding just, like, say, on a rogue, that sucks. Like just going mm. from mob to mob, just killing it, that sucks. And, and that's why I'm so on board with accelerated rates in the, the the conversation of a seasonal server. If you're doing a 12 month server, fucking mate, that 1.5 times feels great. I love it. I love playing the game that way. I respect that if we get like something more serious, like a classic plus, and it's a two year server, yeah, okay, then we can talk about doing the one times, even though I'm still not really in love with it. Um, you know, there's more of an argument there. That's fine. That's cool. But like 12 months of the people out there going like, mate, do one times for a 12 month server. Fuck off. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, I mean, you definitely, so I definitely have to agree with you that I think it would have been better had they put more of the rules in. I think it definitely would have been better. I don't see how they could have done that from a business perspective. Like, they ha they had to clear this with the higher ups and every and everything else. Like I'm guessing it was not an easy process to get that done. I don't know. I'm just guessing. I disagree. I disagree that from a business perspective, this was more motivating because in general, the people you're going to attract are already WoW players, which they pay a one time subscription for and get access to classic and. This yeah, but server, I mean, they right? also want the the big streamers like uh, what's his name, the guy that cheated. Uh, oh God, what's his name? Uh, Someone's out there saying all of them, <laughs> right? No, what's his name? Uh, he's the one that got the bags and then got caught red red handed. Zyru made fun of him, but he's his friend. I have no idea. Okay, God, either way, whatever. So you're saying they want the big streamers to promote hardcore? Uh, I mean, pretty much every Mitch. Yes. Thank you, Grays. Mitch Jones. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, every gaming company wants the big streamers to promote their game. It's become the meta. What I will say is they want bring big streamers to promote. Wow. They yeah, do getting, not getting, care. Getting streaming attention is great. And hardcore was a great flash in the pan moment. Correct. But they do not care if street big streamers are promoting. Wow. Classic. Wow. Classic hardcore, wow era, wow mm. dragon fight. Mm. Like they do not mm. care because right. it is one subscription, one right? Sub. Yeah. So financially, presenting this to your board is not 
going to come off as like, hey, look at all of these new people we're going to get to get subscriptions, right? I do think that there was a better argument that you could get new people to subscribe if you came out with a whole different game mode. I think that people would have come back that weren't subscribing anymore to potentially try out this game mode, right? I, I'm going to say one last I, I I do want to talk about the Classic Plus stuff, but Mel, I want to hear from you a bit more on that. I'm going to say one last thing, my mm-hmm. last piece on hardcore, and it's very succinctly summarized by being like, the players asked for hardcore and they got World of Warcraft. That's how I'm going to end it, right? <laughs> um, Mel, I'm, I'm glad you brought up that point at the end there because I've started to say something similar recently where like now that we're really deep in the weeds with what's going on with the future of World of Warcraft and the many different versions we've got under one subscription, how fucking like Blizzard gets a lot of shit, but how fucking genius have they looked recently with what they've done now with all people are just jumping from version to version to version and that sub will never expire now. Yep. Yeah, it won't. And I mean, that is like, that's their way of mobile gaming it. That's their way of competing with Candy Crush, right? Like they have these monthly subscriptions that now they've offered them so many options that people do not cancel them. And that is their goal, right? And I'm not saying everybody's goal. I know that there's a lot of developers out there that really want hardcore to be amazing and they want classic to be amazing and they want retail to be amazing. I'm not saying that there's anybody in there saying, no, this is just for the money, but the people at the top are like, and that's their job. And that's why we continue to have blizzard games. (laughs) Like there's nothing bad about making money. That's what the other Josh in chat uh, said earlier is like, how bad is it if like hardcore has a really good launch and then it stays there and then something else launches in another version of classic or retail and then people come back to hardcore after like you have something to do in the different lulls. I think like that is kind of cool. How bad is it for them versus how bad is it for... The community. No, he, Josh was saying it's, it's, you know, not a problem. Be, it's not a problem if hardcore only has temporary success and goes in and out of popularity waves. That was his argument. I saw him say that, Bob. I'm glad you raised it. I didn't want to <laughs> touch on that. I, dis, I love Josh. I disagree because my, my only alternative point is, yeah, there's, there's nothing theoretically wrong with that, but you had another scenario where you still could have had the more popular option that maybe people wouldn't have even walked away from in the first place. You know what I mean? You don't have to deal with um, uh, heat spots of popularity for for hardcore. You might have just had people stay the whole way if you'd gone with the alternative version. But anyway, Mel, um, sorry, on what you guys were saying with the, the, the many different versions, it's kind of like that they're brilliant in that, like we're not subscribed to World of Warcraft anymore. We're subscribed to WoW Flicks. And mm-hmm. that's what it's turning into. And it's like, I just, I really We're have subscribed to, to like, worlds of Warcraft. Well, yeah, basically. Um, you see, you see that, Mel? He's got a fucking one up me. What I, do <laughs> with you. I thought Wild Flicks was clever, Josh. I'll it, give it to you. I think Thank both you. of them are, I, th- I, th- I think both of them are great. Like, um, so yeah, do, let's go I to do, the, let's go to yeah, the, the, the yeah, other, gonna, sorry, unless you want, yeah, yeah we're going to move on, but I want to just like, pr- like preface, Like, I'm saying I don't mind what they did. I'm with Josh saying I wish they had done the other. I wish there, like, I don't want Petries. I don't, like, there's so Mm. many things that I don't want. Mm. Like, I would have liked that more. I just, I don't mind as much as some other people, I guess. I'm happy there was a better option, though. That's my point. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Agreed. All right. Well, okay. So, all right, so Wait, for editing, that, the next season of Mastery Server will be hardcore server with all the actual hardcore rules. No, no, no. no. <laughs> you know, let's do it. We're the next doubling down, of bitches. Server, um, the next season of Mastery Server will be something significant, I would think. Oh, man. Yeah. Uh, um, okay, so for the editing process, I don't know. I'm just letting you guys know here so I don't have to like put it in later. You might hear this on the same episode. You might get this <laughs> come Thursday. So we'll just have to Goodbye. see what what happens. But let's move into 
Bobby, we need to have a talk about this World of Warcraft classic. Do I look like I know what a WoW token is? All right, so... Classic Plus. I want to do a Classic Plus wish list, and... Like, we're just going to kind of throw things out here. I don't know... I don't think this should be too, too long. Maybe 30, 45 minutes. What do you guys think? I think that's about... I mean, we I could go God, four maybe hours. Maybe time limit on this. Oh, you Come on. me on this show, you're in trouble. <laughs> yeah. I, I can't go too much longer. Maybe like 30, 40 minutes. Yeah. Cool, cool, yeah. Cool, I, cool, I, cool. I'm doing the North thing now. Now you have to go for another two hours. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And I oh, almost... Josh is on the timeline. Okay, let's keep going. I almost yeah, yeah, yeah. asked you if we wanted to have North on. And now I think to myself, we wouldn't even got through half <laughs> of my notes if we had No, North and, on. and this, this is where I have to like semi-apologize to you and the listeners where I'm like, wow. you know, you, you guys knew that I never get a chance to talk like this on my own fucking show. Um, so you really are dealing with all of this pent up frustration and <laughs> thoughts and everything. Um, and I feel so bad because I'm such no, a dick. I like talk, I interrupt, I talk over the top of you and I'm not trying to be rude. And you like, are, yeah. you dude, God, dude, you are like this You've show, been great. you are the guest. Like, and that's why, the star. yeah, that's why we didn't bring somebody else on. Cause I thought you might have a lot to say. So I think it's, mm -hmm. so I think it's good. Yes. Don't, uh, don't think that at all, but I'm going to start us off with this question because I loved it. Um, all right. This is from uh, Leroy Awusis, A W W A U W C. I, yeah. Okay. Leroy. Fuck. Here's a, a question for this week's guests. If you could create a brand new class for Classic Plus, what would it be? Feel free to go into to detail about what the talent trees are and what types of weapons armor they can use and which races can roll as it. Do you guys have something in mind? Cause I have definitely, I have two things in mind, but one I really want. All right. I'm, I'm super keen to talk about this. So like I'll preface this with, you know, I don't expect anything wild, like a new class in whatever we're getting next with, you know, Season of Mastery 2 or Classic Plus. But let's just go in the room where we're nerds having fun and talking about yes, if, vanilla, exactly. if vanilla could use, if vanilla had or could use an extra class, what would you do? All right. Mm -hmm. I am so glad you asked because here's <laughs> my thought. Um, now, look, you sort of got to look at vanilla and go, you know, not so much what you want, but also what's it need. Um, right. you know, I, I looked at the, the you, it's very easy and quick to look at it. You go, all right, we've got plenty of DPS. We've got some melee DPS. We've got some range DPS. We've got some healers. And I, I truly think that you have to look at the tank role and be like, there's something missing. There, there's, you know, right. what have we got? We've got the warrior that everyone wants to be that as the tank, cause it's the best and it's not even close. We've got druid tanks, which are fine, totally fine, but they do seem to be missing just a little not something. Really. Yeah, and then there's the Paladin tank, which is like people keep trying to convince themselves it's totally okay to have a Paladin <laughs> tank in a dungeon. And like, yeah, it is fine, but like, uh, it's just, again, it's just it missing it a little something. <laughs> so we need another tank, in my opinion. We need another tank option. Um, I, I Particularly given that one of the tanks, the Paladin, is only available to the fucking Alliance. So, you know, mm. Horde... You know, the Shaman, I know we do the, oh, the yeah. it can, it can kind of tank dungeons, but not really. Let's just say that there's really only two tanks for Horde, right? Druid or fucking Warrior. Um, done, right? So they mm -hmm. need something else. They need a third option. So I present to you um, the Tinkerer. All right. Now, this okay. is a tank. This is a tank class. This can be rolled by uh gnomes dwarves humans orcs trolls and undead right sorry taurans okay. sorry uh night elves <laughs> um right the and if you need to do the fucking law behind the class i don't know the alliance are easy the gnomes are obviously master tinkerers they've taught <laughs> taught the dwarves and the humans how to do it oh well how can the fucking horde do it josh well i'm glad you asked 
Undead used to be humans. They knew it from the gnomes when they were alive and they've taught the rest of the horde. So shut the fuck up. The law's covered. <laughs> All right. We got this. We got this. All right. So this is a leather, leather wearing tank, right? And as it a has. tinker, though, huh? It, it is a tinkerer that wears leather and it has um, but they ranged bind, abilities. But they bind metals together. They well, they do bind metals together. It doesn't mean they wear they have to them. Wear their own metals. Yeah, they <laughs> bind metals together to use them <laughs> against their opponents. So you, you're okay, picking up okay. with where I'm going with this one, Bob. So now I wouldn't describe this necessarily as a pet class per se, but they've got a buddy, right? Now you have a <laughs> Mel mechanical just in the kitchen. <laughs> <laughs> You've got a little mechanical robot buddy, kind of similar to, you know, the what's, the what's the mini little, um, um, uh, you know, when you go to Dead Mines and the goblins summon the mechanical dudes? Yeah, yeah, the, yeah. I yeah, forget yeah. their name, but yes, yeah. Yeah, think, think of an even, maybe even a slightly smaller, cuter version of that, right? Your little robot buddy guy, right? So, um, he is your friend who can do a number of different things. Now, again, we want ranged abilities. I, I've, I've, I've got some ideas here, Bob. I want to run this by you and, and Mel when she comes back. So, oh no, Mel um, can, Mel can, Mel can hear you. Oh, she can hear me. Okay, oh, yeah, okay. yeah. So, yeah, whenever we, we, we walk off, up, we can hear. We keep up the RP factor like hunters do with their pets. You have to maintain or repair your your little robot buddy via oils and liquids. Think oil, alcohol, water, those kinds of items in game, right? You might give it different things for different reasons, but that's how you got to up to keep it. If its happiness goes down or if its maintenance goes down, I should say, it doesn't do as much damage, right? So just relatively similar to a hunter pet. And it makes regard. a weird sound too for like a sound audio cue that you need to be oiling. Like it's like... Oh, yeah, yeah, the rustiness. Yeah, let's do that. Yeah. Fuck yeah, let's like make people turn off their in-game sound for sure. <laughs> <laughs> no, so it... it, it in slightly different, why I say it's not quite a pet class is I know some people get annoyed by pet classes. Let's say that this guy, look, summoning and resummoning your little guy doesn't affect its maintenance level like with a hunter. So, you know, if for display purposes, you don't want to be running around with your little robot running next to you, you can just de-summon him and that's fine. You're not penalized for that. Just pull him out when you fight the next mob and it's all good. Now, here's what he can do. So... You can do the following things. You can turn, you can use the ability ticking time bomb. Your little buddy becomes a single target. He uh, attaches himself to a mob. 10 second timer starts ticking down like curse of doom, but on a shorter timer, obviously big single target damage. And if he blows up, you just summon another one, right? But you need parts. So what's the resource that tinkerers use? Well, they have, um, uh, like, it uh, comes back to you like a rogue's energy. So it's the energy system, but we're calling it parts or whatever. So you need to keep building that up and you spend them when you use an ability or when you summon your little robot guy, right? Because you need parts to build all this shit. So outside of his single target thing, he's also got um, the remote controlled bomb. Uh, same thing, attaches to a mob and you determine when to hit that for an AOE damage ability, right? It's like, um, it's like what's the Warlocks? Uh, seed of Corruption, but you actually control when it goes off rather than being on a timer. So you can um, wait no, for it at the, what is it, the right spot? Wait, you wait for the perfect moment and you go fucking big bada boom. All right. Kind of like the DOGC no recently, uh, the, the little guys that get to, on your back. Uh, at the start okay. of beasts, it's 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 a thing. These little ads get on your back, and they have to like run up to like the group so the group could cleave it. Okay, cool. okay, gotcha, gotcha. Um, the gnomish car bomb. The gnomish car bomb. This is a one and a half second cast time. Uh, your little guy turns into a controllable um, mobile unit. And you can control <laughs> him for ten seconds. He can transform into a little RC car if you want. You got him for 10 seconds and he can be driven ahead and explode on command for AOE damage, right? So oh this is God. how you this is generally how you pull. But it's a one and a half second cast time. So you don't really want to do it in combat, right? So you can't cheese. Um, so that's your pull. 
You've also got ranged abilities like you drop down a turret that might cast some AoE threat. threat. I call that bullet storm. Um, you drop out your shark net, which is basically a frost nova, but with uh, nets on a 60 second cooldown for a four second route. Um, you've got, uh, I've got like, he works off of parry for proc. So he stack, the druid stacks dodge as a tank. Um, this tank will stack parry, I think. So he's got heaps high parry. When you parry an ability, you get a proc that goes off. When you dodge an ability, you get a proc that goes off. Um, your taunt is called dodge this. You pull out a rifle and you blast something straight away when it runs <laughs> at your, your friends. Um, that's about this as far like as a, I've got like him. a range type of tank. Yeah, so he's he's like got a combination. He, no, he he does melee, but he's got ranged option. So mm-hmm. he, he can pull from ranged really well. He can really reestablish a threat with like AOE threat. He can mm-hmm. just he's got options, a couple of options at range. So that's my idea. He can pay, he uses int and strength to scale. So he competes with um boomies on their gear. No, no, sorry, mm-hmm. sorry, not so much boomies. Um it just competes with druids in general on the druid mm-hmm. gear. Um, I thought it'd be good because druids get their gear so fucking easily. Let's give them some Yeah, right. <laughs> yeah. Um, well, so yeah, okay. that's as far as I've kind of gotten. Yeah. Where, what are we thinking? Okay, you'd have to make it so it was caster druid gear because feral druid gear is like yeah, 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 that's what by I mean. like freaking no, no, no. rogues that's and why, that's warriors why I said and int. everything else. Yeah. We, we got to get them scaling in somehow. Okay. So like the, the caster druid gear, yeah. Yeah. I like For it. Sure. I like it. You could even have That's like cool. I love the think. different mechanics. Like that, they sound like engineering mechanics, right? That a That's tinker right, yeah. would do, and um, and they could have it's a buff like something too. so different, right? Like the, they could have an armor buff, right? Well, yeah, that's what I was going to say. Pally armor buff because yeah, they're Yeah, because people, people will say the leather, why the leather, Josh, he'll get destroyed. Don't worry. We'll put in a buff that, that obviously gives them more armor and it's fine. Yeah, yeah. Yes. You're you're adding some metal during the raid to uh, yeah, all, yeah. to everybody's armor, even clothies. Like they get a little, you know, mithril little uh, chest plate, you know. Yeah, yeah. Call it like mm. horns up or something and fucking your leather takes on the properties of metal. I like it. I like it. Yeah, dude, that was that was really good. I feel like you should have gone last. Um, <laughs> well, I've got another one, so don't worry. You guys go in, and then I'll come back. Okay. To <laughs> Mel, do you have do you, do you have? Nope, one? nope. I don't have anything to say now. Um, I no. I have okay. got some, but okay. I agree that I do think a tank class would be the best to give us. Um, I think that I think we definitely fix some of the tank problems though throughout. Well, this too. is I was presuming that none of the other classes get touched, right? So that's mm-hmm. what we yes. needed. We yep. needed Same. another viable tank. I think this is I think this is supposed to be like your love letter to what you want. Like and like okay, so I first started, I could use the battle mage, which is what I wanted to be when I first started. Wow, that's why I used it. I was a mage and I used an agi sword because I had no idea how the game worked. Like, And I was up there meleeing mobs while fire blasting and like everything else. Like, And I think a battle mage could be cool. Like let the battle mage use leather. Let them, you know, basically be a mix between a rogue and a mage but like i that's not the one that i want like well i've i've can i i should jump in now i've got you covered bob so let's let's piggyback off of that because this is my second one i'm with you i fucking love the concept of battle mages right (laughs) but like you know you look at the shaman and you go well the shaman an enhanced shaman basically is a battle mage but it doesn't feel like a battle mage yeah i know know. much more so in wrath it really is more of a battle mage than anything else but like i mean it definitely it definitely is but i imagine a battle mage with like a sword in one hand ah and and i like where you're going fire or something else in the other hand so like they're like using like Basically, they're using arcane to shield. Like, like it just becomes you've, like an actual shield. Mind. Yeah, like, and like it's like a mix between the two. That's how I feel. Battle mage. Can I be. can I give you one word? As as you've read my mind, can I give you the word that is the answer to all your problems, Blob Bob? What? Blade Master. Now, mm-hmm. people don't think of that as a battle. 
People, yeah, that's right. People don't think of that as a battle mage, but what if we just fucking made it a battle mage? <laughs> you are the master. You are the master of swords, who also happens to command a little bit of magic. All right. So I'm talking abilities like, like look Witcher. At War- Warcraft Three. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So look at Warcraft Three. What can they do? Hey, how about this, baby? Wind walk, right? Now, what does wind walk do? It gives you stealth. Oh, but Josh, we've already got two stealth classes. All right. How about wind walk for the the blade master in WoW? Gives you temporary stealth. Ten seconds. You're in stealth. Do with it what you will. Like mage on a one minute building. cooldown or something. Exactly. Right. So ten seconds of stealth. Mm-hmm. You can pop up on someone. You can't stun them, but you can get a big fat openness from stealth. <laughs> right. All right, mirror image. Like mages obviously get that later, but we could give it to a blade master in vanilla. Mm-hmm. Um, I think it would be cool to give them like a killing spree like ability that the rogues got. But also, here's where we go. I think we even had mirror image as a blade master in Warcraft 3, or at least in you the did, arena. You did. That, that, no, you did. Thing. That's why I'm bringing it up. Yeah, this, is, yeah. this is the stuff that was mirror image and uh, wind walking was in Warcraft 3. So mm. to add on to that, how about this? Even though it's a bit similar to what Shaman can kind of do, but like elemental blades. So you you can potentially like dispel your opposing elemental effects depending on what elemental blade you are currently using or maybe just dampen damage. But I was thinking it'd be cool if you could like, you know, if you had like, nature elemental blade you could have a chance at dispelling poisons from you um frost elemental blade you have a chance at like dispelling frost overs from you or some shit like that um i thought that'd be cool um uh silent blades 60 second cooldown plant your sword in the ground for an aoe four second disarm uh huh. There you go. Spicy. There you go. Okay. Yeah. Ah. Here's, 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 your, here's your best part of the, uh, for me, the Blade Master, though, Bob. And you, you build on this. Everyone loved, well, not everyone loved, but people were, you know, thought it was cute when we started talking Spell Hand Shaman healing in uh, Wrath. Baby, melee healer. Everyone loves the monk in retail. Melee healer in vanilla. The damage you've done or the, the, Damage that you've buffed on other people strengthens your heals. You could do it like, you know, whenever you use, an, maybe like Shaman in Wrath, whenever you use an offensive ability on a mob, you get a stack. If you get to three, you get an instant heal or some shit like that. But I want a melee fucking healer different to a paladin that actually gets in there and gets aggressive. Mm-hmm. That's Dude, one of their talent specs. It's one of their talent specs. Every time I try to bring like up like a damage dealer that heals also, everybody always points out the monk, which I never played. Um, Everyone loves monk. Yeah, but like I did play Dis Priest in Kata, and that's where they kind of started that thought. Like, you, you, like you're literally doing damage to the boss while healing the tank. Like it's kind of like the pally in Wrath, like where they could put their... On the um, Dis Priest? Yeah, yeah. Where they could put their thing on someone else and it heals them too while they heal the other thing. I forget what it's called. But uh like a beacon? Yeah, yeah. And so like in in Kata, Dis Priest has something where you damage the boss, but it heals whoever the boss I believe I believe this is how it goes. It heals who because I only played it for a short time after you quit because I took over your account, and turned it into a goblin priest. But it like heals whoever the boss is attacking while you're doing an attack to so, it. You, wait, I'm you played this holy is a in Catabelle. You played holy. I played dist after well, you I'm quit. Well, I'm trying to wrap my head around this though. It's like a healer that damages the boss to heal other people. Like yes. that just sounds like yeah, to heal whatever mm, person that boss. I don't know how is I feel attacking. about that. Well, that I was feel like Kata. there would be. I feel like there would be a difference if, like, I could damage the boss to gain access to a heal that I could then heal the raid with. I like that idea. I feel like healing the raid just by damaging the boss, I feel like it's just like a... Eh. Yeah, I'm I'm with you, Mel. I, I prefer the active as opposed to passive kind yeah. of thing. And, like, I love... I'm obsessed with offensive healers. Like, I want... I want... And I know it kind of defeats the purpose, but yeah, Final Fantasy fourteen is yeah, very good Final with Fantasy this. Final Fantasy does like, it, too. Healers are encouraged to get in there and fucking do some damage in between your heals, and it feels and, so good. Well, supposedly Monk is like that in uh, Miss. Like, I never played Miss, so I don't know, but that's what well, I've heard I, from a lot of people. I think healers in retail in general are actually quite offensive these days. Yeah. 
That's what I think. Well, yeah, because like from what I hear in retail, like tanks just heal themselves. Like, yeah, it's yeah. basically how it works. I, you died, I, mean, I died, and they didn't even need me. Like it was I, <laughs> my, first, my first dungeon I did on Dragonflight. I'm pretty sure I was a fuckweed. I died, dude. You and probably I just them, like literally not need me. You probably did the same thing as me. You're like, all right, I'll play Dragonflight. You sent it to me free with this big box of stuff. I feel like an asshole if I don't play it a little bit. <laughs> oh no, I had to pay. I had to buy it. But um, I I'm very very opposed to. Um, and I, I see this happen with WoW too much, and it's everything past vanilla. I feel like you can do this. I'm really opposed to MMO design where the group is like totally fine and you barely notice it when a key role goes down. I hate that too. Healer, if your healer dies or if your tank dies, I'm sorry. I think you should be fucked. Right. Unless you have a hybrid class that can maybe off heal yeah. ineffectively oh, yeah. for a short amount of time. Like, or I like, think that's fine. Or yeah, like if there's an a... ML, M, MLG gaming plays that, that lets the group survive, I'm into that. Right. But like, I don't want to see them brain dead play through the tank Agreed. or the healer down. Like you d literally, you're watching yourself not matter. <laughs> I, dude, I, I feel this is great. I feel like so inadequate when like a druid, like your tank dies, the boss is at twenty percent. You have this badass fucking feral druid that switches to bear and just tanks the boss for the rest of the boss. It feels amazing, but you're like sitting there yeah. thinking, if I'm fury spec and I put a sh and I put a shield on, I'm not doing that same thing that that feral druid just did, <laughs> like. And that, like, that part hurts, but, like, it is, like, we have a feral druid in our second raid, our weekend raid. She is a mythic raider in retail, so she's really good at the game, right? Anytime a tank dies, she's immediately bare and taunting everything and making sure the raid doesn't wipe. And it's so impressive to me, and I wish more classes had that type of, like, that type of, like, oh, I could switch quickly type of but deal see, then it yeah. discounts that she's class. a fucking gamer she's a gamer and Dude, she doesn't care about fucking dps how many feral druids group. have you worked with that did not do that true Ever. true but like right a oh. warrior doing the same thing can only throw a shield on and go to protection stance which really doesn't like help them i know in retail they like in retail you probably can do that like because of all the stat homogenization and not having to do defense, but like, yeah, I don't know. I'm getting off on a tangent here. Yeah, move on. Oh, yep. Yep. In chat. Yep. Sig is awesome. Shout out to Sig, the badass druid in Varg's weekend raid. Man, hearing stories like that, I just go like, because I'm, I'm dying deciding whether to play rogue or druid in the next season and hearing stories like that mm. i'm just like oh that is so cool like i just don't know right? what to do. both classes are so druids fucking cool. are really cool dude they are really cool they just have so druid much i feel like there is so much right like i feel like you play a rogue and you figure out how to play your rogue you play a druid and okay this was my mistake because i leveled a druid for tbc and i was gonna pvp with a druid <laughs> that's funny because I then respect, realized yeah. <laughs> that I only wanted to PvP with the Druid, but I actually didn't know how to play the Druid well enough. And then I was being like, I was in arena and people were yelling at me like, hey, switch to bear, do this, do that, do that. And I was like, nope, nope, I can't do this. I don't have time to learn how to do this. Yep, you need I to switch to bear, wish you need I charge just to interrupt them. Because yep. that was what I knew. But yeah, Druid is hard. Druid is definitely hard, but man, like you can just be the master of the universe if you like get it but all. Can you set in up. classic? In dude, I mean uh um, vanilla. We uh, yeah, don't you remember our good our good friend Nick? Like who we did all the like stealth yeah. runs with? Like, you know, us three, you as a healer, him as a druid tank, me as a rogue. Bushy was in classic, previous. right? Or was he in TBC? Who? Bushy. Bushy, we met Bushy in TBC. 
Pushy was a good tank, but I mean, I never saw him do DPS or anything else. Like, I'm just, <laughs> yeah, I, I'm I've just had saying. better. <laughs> <laughs> no, he was a badass tank. I'm just saying, like, I don't know that I could compare him to like <laughs> Sig or like Nick. Like, okay, like, okay. These are the people that know every bit of the class, every form, know how to throw out a spot heal for somebody else. Like, Druid yeah. just has so many options. It's um, absolutely nuts. I'm so sorry. I'm crudely picturing like the tank, you know, I'm really going to get crude here. Like the, the post coital scene of the tank, like heaving in bed going, Oh, Oh, that was amazing. That was the best I've ever had. Oh my God. Was it good for you? And like Bob with the cigarette guy. Yeah. That's oh, all right. I guess. Oh, that yeah. better. <laughs> yeah, that's a goal. Yeah. Oh, but okay. Oh, so God. all right here. My actual creme de la creme class, like the class that I want the most of all, Ranger. Ooh, Dark Ranger or Ranger? I want Aragorn. I want to oh. use a, I want to wear, I, okay, so I want so to use. Not, that's not the Hunter? No. No. Okay, so, okay. Hunters? Suck ass with melee weapons. Hey, hey, hey. hey, they hit hard. No, they <laughs> can melee weave. Yes, in PVE. I'm talking like PVP. Like, I want a class that hits hard close up, but still has the option for ranged and not be just a meme like right. it is with a So you almost or, want like, you almost want like a stance dancer. I, I want a ranger. Like, and I want to be able to, like, like this is going to sound weird, but I want to have half leather, half male. Or maybe even half leather. Half, pleather. Pleather. Half, no, no, I've got it. Pleather. Half, half plate. Like, in the, in, the, in the helm spot, you could wear plate or male. In the chest, uh, chest, legs, boots, you're wearing leather. But, like... Gauntlets, you could have male uh, bracers, you could have male. Like, I want a pish posh of like what I can use for that, right? And I want yeah. to use a two handed sword, and I want to be a mix between a rogue and a and a and a and a and a hunter. And I don't want to be it. the best at either, I just want to be the best at doing both things at the same time. He uh he wears uh sorry I said before, do you know what pleather is, Bob? Fake leather. Yeah. But uh -huh. anyway, forget that. He wears suede, right? <laughs> All yeah. suede. And then you can have the blue suede like, shoes in the game. You're like the Walmart kid over there, you know? I don't know. In I the pleather I, instead of the leather. I just always thought a ro like and they wouldn't have they would not have they would not have stealth, but they'd have something where they could like sneak up on someone to a point but like like at a point they would be revealed to them because they couldn't stealth right to them but they could have a little bit of stealth like as far as like yeah i don't yeah i don't i don't know like i just you think didn't like think this all the way through no i mean i've thought about it for for years like i've always thought how cool it would be to he's, be a rogue with a two-handed sword like he's written the fan fiction novel already mel come on <laughs> it's, fine. it's fine yeah yeah i, I just, mean, like, no, I, I, mean I, like I, I grew it. up reading lord of the rings and then like the trilogy was one of the best like the best movie experiences of all times like i want to be aragorn <laughs> So what about, what, what, this is what I was saying with like, how do you feel about like the stance dancing thing? It's like, what if you had a long, mid and short range stance, like the warrior and you switch between the three and you have to use a global and like you've, you've kind of just got a few abilities in each stance there and you decide what range you want to fight at and you can kind of manipulate the mob to be short, mid or long and you've got to kind of go between all three maybe if you're being the most efficient. I, I like know. that. I like that. Because you could do like, I'm in long range. I have my heavy opener from range while running in. Uh, stance change to mid range. Lob the fucking nade at him or whatever, or the net or something. 
dance dance into short range and now I hit him with my sword stay in melee stay in melee trap him duck him back out to mid yep. change stance yep. duck him, him back with out the like crossbow. It. yeah I don't know yeah, yeah, like that would be that would be my creme de la creme of like what I would love, and like it, and I mean I play com I play combat rogue right now, which really doesn't capitalize a lot on the stealth. Like it's really like a, you know, and and I feel like combat rogue with like some range stuff could be really cool. But I'm also thinking of it in a PVP sense. Cause like this character would suck in PVE, like to properly <laughs> balance it for PVP. This character would just suck ass in uh, PVE. Well, not, which not is necessarily what because the guys are saying, as the guys are saying in chat, you know, there's plenty of examples in other MMOs where this has been done successfully. Where like, I think of things like they're raising the red mage and like you maybe even the dragoon or whatever in Final Fantasy 14. I'm not sure, but like you know, you, you use you have yeah they have got a dragoon in in Final Fantasy 14. Wait, but they um, stole Legend of Dragoon. No, no, Final, no, no, no. Uh, Final Fantasy stole dragoon. No, I think a dragoon has been a fantasy thing for many. many oh, I, many yeah, years. I just I um, played the Final Fantasy ish it, game fun, called I, Legend of Dragoon. Like it was one oh, no, of my I know, favorite I know ones. Of all yeah, time. I know, like like ninety six PlayStation. I know Legend of Dragoon yep, for sure. Yep. Uh, um, one of my but, favorites. Um, no, so Dragoons have been in Final Fantasy since like fucking I don't know nineteen ninety or something. But um, either way, the uh, like the Red Mage has like, they've got abilities like you know you can do like somersaults, backflips, or whatever back out to max range and shit like that. So like you could form your cooldowns around like go in blow a big cooldown on a melee hit, use your backflip to go back 30. I mean, it's basically like a hunter's disengage, right? Yeah, backflip, right. back out 30 yards, pop your big bow cooldown, and then go back. Like, it's all based around cooldowns, you know what I well, mean? Well, and know. then also, like, put it as, like, so, like, currently for, like, a combat rogue or even a feral druid, you're trying to do up uptime on, like, your different debuffs, like, whether it be... uh the the bleed slice and dice expose armor yada 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 you can have it to where you have to jump in and out of melee range to keep these different things up and that would be really fun and it would like also it would also solve the problem of like i don't know how much you've rated like with like melee as opposed to ranged but ranged is actually like you get to look at a lot of cool stuff, whereas oh, yeah, melee yeah. you look at the you look shit. at the boss's ass, and like yeah, you're oftentimes shit. with the different strategies you're stuck in a corner. But like melee, I I love way way more. Oh, even 100%. though it's all I like to play now, yeah, even though like I don't get a good view of what's going on, right? Like so, like. A ranger would just be so perfect for me. Yeah. No, I'm with you. I only play melee these days, but like easily the worst part of melee is that fucking stupid view you get in raids. I hate melee. Yep. You're just literally uh -oh. like, I like bosses, butts, and I cannot lie. Them other and melee even, even if you die. zoom out, even if you zoom out and get like a good angle, it's still awkward. Yeah. yeah. I, I use the macro that makes your zoom to where you could like super zoom. And yeah. I just, for those fights, I basically just look straight top down and zoom up as pos as like high as I pos like possibly can. And like, that's about the best fix I could do for it. But yeah, it just, I, I don't know how you fix that because you want bosses to be big and scary. So. <laughs> But yeah. But anyway, yeah. I mean, Tinkerer, do it, Blizzard, you cowards. All right, all right. I want to. I, I want to let off a gnomish car bomb. All right, Mel. Mm -hmm. What? Tell us about your favorite class that you've been thinking of forever: the florist. Think, uh, think, uh, nope. Ares from Final Fantasy VII. You're the you're the florist. Like, okay. tell us about the florist class. Okay, so Newsbreaker, I have not played Final Fantasy VII, so I cannot tell you any of that. I can tell no, you that I sells, really she just enjoyed. She sells flowers. Is all this? I can tell you that I really enjoyed playing Sorcerer and Diablo. 
And but how does that differ from only mage? one only one kind of sorcerer I liked playing. Then they had me play these other types of sorcerer, like firewall and all this stuff. That was annoying. But how does like that, that differ from mage, though? Okay, I basically am saying that I'm a healer that is craving to do some sort of damage to the boss at the same time. But I don't want it to take away from my healing abilities. I just want it to like Which I want to have Kata some sort of like with penance. damage. Okay, whatever. I have penance right now. Yeah, but when you shoot the boss with it, it heals whoever the boss is attacking, I believe. I believe yeah, that's the I one I back. did. I don't want that. It might have been I don't know. smite. I don't know I'm if not I want sure. it. It's fine. All right, I so have no nothing. Nope. Nope, that's all. All right, well, I'm going to I'm going to dub Josh the winner of this segment. Oh, 100%. Um, 100%. Yay. Tinker, Tinker slash, for the win. Tinker. Tinker Bring it. And uh and and Blade uh the Blade Master, yeah, Blade I Master, probably didn't you. talk about it as much as I, I could have, but yeah, I, I, I'm titillated by the Blade Master. All right, all right. Well, let's just do like let's just do a, a a little quick wish list for Classic Plus. I'll start. Dual spec, dual spec, dual spec, dual spec, dual spec. Maybe even tri spec. Yeah, I agree. Dual spec, like it's it, it, we don't even talk about it. That's how much of a non-conversation it should be, in my opinion. <laughs> um, I agree. My, my weird one, um, like, like I said, look, there's a difference between what, as we also, you know, you ask a thousand people, get a different, a thousand different answers, difference between want and maybe what will likely be done. I think right. now that we're far more, given what we saw with the PvP system, I think Blizzard have showed their cards a little bit with what might be coming with Season of Mastery 2, and we are actually going to get something that is really much more uh, in the spirit of vanilla and like just a, a, an extension of vanilla as opposed to a changing of vanilla. Um, so I, I still expect like some form of class changes, but like the minimal stuff, like paladins get a taunt, some abilities get boosted in damage and some mana issues get sorted, whatever you need right. to do. I just, I can't see a drastic like TBC or wrath talent overhaul. I'm not going in on whether or not I want those things. I'm just saying what I think is going to be, coming our way but outside of that um my weird one what i really really want on my wish list um herbing and minimalism nodes rearranged yeah like i, I, mean, I, I don't want to yeah i don't want to know where everything that? is didn't they do that in no, they, they added some? they added new ones they added new ones so I, and they, they had only everything did it for they only did it for black lotus like for right? black lotus and stuff yeah 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 so like okay. what i'm asking for is actually like a complete overhaul of where everything is placed like honestly i, I think they should just randomly randomize put it, it there yeah just randomly put it at like any place like how because like, i how hate the that, thought right? of standing at one spot to get a herb that i want for 20 minutes because i'm waiting for it to respawn like that's ridiculous like i should just yeah. be able to find them in the open world as i'm doing other things and yeah i agree I think oh, that would Net be Nettie massive. calling for the sparkles, the sparkles on the nodes. I wouldn't be opposed to that. Wait. Um, oh, yes. Hey, Mel, do you get what he's saying? Like, it's the thing in Wrath. Yeah. Where, like, sparkles, like, started showing up on different things, like, that you could interact with. I actually don't hate that at all, either. I, Can I, I ask a I feel like that was just a modern gaming coming in. A weird question, because gathering is my thing. Do you particularly care whether a mining node is one or four tabs? No. I would like it just to be one. One. It 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 doesn't really phase me either way. I love the one tap, but if the purists are like, no, it's got to be two, three, and four taps. Oh, like, yeah, I don't care. Well, I'm, I'm okay with that, but I mean, whatever, yeah. It's like there's the min-maxing thing. So I get the first tick on a mine. Ass, asshole number one lands to try to like steal some ticks from me, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I'm working on tick two, and then I just wait. Like the like the like looting window pops up, and because of the way it works, I just have to sit uh, sit there until asshole number one walks off, and then I go ahead and click it, and then I go ahead and tick mm -hmm. it again, right? Like. If I'm there first, just let me get the whole thing. 100%. I'm going to go all in on this one and say you're a fucking piece of shit. 
<laughs> if you start touching a node in the open world that someone else has already started oh my on God, with, yeah. with, with, with mining, even with herbalism, but like, uh, if Can someone's we just got make there, it, they've got it. Here's the thing. Can we just make it so that if you try to mine a node that somebody else is already mining, that PVP flags you for that person so oh, they can turn around and murder you. Oh, it be. Even because if they're it, your same faction. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes. 100% yeah. Five for the node. Like, I'm so in traitor. Oh, I like that. I like that. I like that. I that was always so the most that. frustrating thing is like, I can't even kill you. Like, if you were a horde, I could yeah. kill you, but I can't and even kill you. I, I'm okay with like, there's the argument, obviously, the what about skill points? Like, look, if you're in Molten Core, and a guildie's like, hey, man, do you mind if I tap that for the point and not take the shit? It's like, whatever, fine, do it. That's that's cool. But in the open world where you don't know the fucking person, they've just ridden up next to you and started being like, hey, bro, can I get a skill point? I'm kind of like, fuck off. No, I was here first. Yeah. Like, what if you get something? Go fight like, your own mind. Yeah. Dude, <laughs> even in the open world, if someone takes the, the time to type and slash say, hey, dude, can I get a tick for a point? I've always let them go. If they try if to they take it, for it, then I just, I just like that. It's a whole different thing. And like, yeah, yeah like, I agree. If they ask for it politely, fine. Yeah. But like, and maybe yeah. I'm in a bad mood and I, and for that day I say no. Right. Like, then that's fine too. But like, if they ask, it's kind of mm -hmm. like, like when websites come up and say, Hey, we make our money from ads. Can you please turn off ad ad blocker? Uh, and they have options that say continue without turning off or turn off. I choose turn off because I want to help them at that point. If a site says, uh, well, you can't go by without turning ad ad blocker off. I no longer use that site. Like, and my so thing, like, my, like it's literally about how you ask. My thing with it though, sometimes is even why I sound like such a, uh, I'll probably just sound like a bit of an ogre through this whole podcast, but like, I'm always like, what if that one, like I arrived at this node first. What if that mm -hmm. one tap was the tap that got the fucking um, you know, the tiger's crystal. eye? Well, no, not so much the Arcanine crystal, but like when you're leveling, like the tiger's eye that maybe mm -hmm. I need because I'm leveling engineering and they're rather expensive on the auction house. Like, I don't know. I'm just a fuckwit that way. No, I mean, it's true, though. But, like, but, but, like, but like you would so probably be more Go willing if somebody asked you nicely. You'd be like, mm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'd be less oh, still right. annoyed. Yeah, but like no matter how nicely they ask, you might be willing and you accept it and you're like, sure, yeah, yeah. go ahead. But you're still annoyed. Like I am still it's annoyed, like yeah. I spent the exact same amount of time trying to find a node to get whatever I needed. Like you there's a node probably ten feet away. Like go find it. Yeah. Um, but yeah, rearrange the node locations. Yeah, okay, so what about like uh oh, I had so I should have written these down. I had so many things like that a classic plus could do. Oh, okay. Well, here we just I we need to hit this this one first though before we get to like the like offset things. Like dude, class balancing has to be a thing. In if we're going to a classic plus I don't care mm. about you private server vanilla Andes that love driving your Ferrari warrior. Yeah, I, I don't care. It's lame. Like boobies are worthless. Rets are worth are you do worthless. realize like, what a task that is though, right? Like we all know <sighs> that class balance along like a I, I agree mean, that it is the most important thing, but it is also the hardest thing. And then you're going to bitch that boomies are just as good as, you know, warlocks. And that's not fair because no, they can no, then no. use their dual spec like, to go to resto druid and be a wonderful druid. Like you have to realize the implications of what you're asking for. No, no, no. Okay. And what you bitched about before. Okay, so like what I bitch about currently in Wrath is like like uh, I wish I could show this to everybody in audio, but like basically 
most classes are pretty close. We've got like three S S tier classes. Then everybody else is pretty dang close. Okay. Wow, classic warriors are literally doing over double damage of anybody else besides rogues. And like, that's not fun. You're going to like, if you're going to be trying to do the best, like speed run, the best parsing that you could do, you're going to bring 15 to 20 warriors. And that's just silly. Like, I'm and not just arguing. The warriors have to fight for gear and everything else. And it's just, it's just not fun. Like, right. it's just I'm not, not arguing fun. that that is not the case. I'm, I'm just telling you that every decision made for a class is going to domino effect into a thousand other things. I know, but if you and just the question is, is, warriors. Okay, do you want, do you want this classic plus next year in a, simple form or do you want Here, it in three I'll, years in a great form I'll and i think that's you, where we're at right I'll give you an easy way to fix warriors um, um you're saying class balance in general though like you want boomies to be viable you want warriors to be nerfed you, bring you want warriors down every other class like bring warriors down and bring uh bring rogues down a peg then all of a sudden the molten core content is actually is actually fun and actually engaging and hard warriors just as viable without world buffs um n not until about the like late late bwl early uh early What's it called? But that's only because of heroic strike canceling too. Like so, like if you didn't have that in the game, like warriors would be significantly worse without like without world buffs. So there's a whole there's a whole thing there. But like either way, you could fix warriors by just changing the way rage generation works. Like, and I I know that sucks because it's like part of. But it's been the problem with warriors in World of Warcraft for the existence of how it of of everything. Like they start off shit, they end gods. Like in every expansion I've ever played. So like just change the way you do rage and like and I don't know exactly what you would want to do, but yes, that is the problem. Like with world buffs going into molten core your rage is off the charts you die lose your buffs all of a sudden you have to heroic strike cancel constantly to actually ever have any rage to do any damage like it's a completely different scenario so like that's what they could do to make it a little bit more fun for everybody else. And I know I'm going to get shit on for this take because like yeah, warriors we're fucking are like half of the, us. Yeah, but warriors are half of the like classic vanilla crowd. So I'm going to get my, shit on hard. My thing is mainly just like I boil it down to a very simple point where I'm just like, make it so that there's no damage class or spec rocking up to a raid that people can turn to and say are you fucking trolling like what are you mm -hmm. are you serious what are you doing here is that spec like if it's a, if it can do damage just make it so it's not a joke that's all th right. this, that's the simple thing for me and if they damage and don't damage as much give them some utility that makes them valuable in spite of the yeah make I mean, them the desirable doing. make them not like literally attacked for being there right like i think druids like even feral druids it's like in classic you should not do as much damage because you have the ability to swap into a tank or swap into a healer right you should not do as much damage as the other melee but you should do enough that you're not like shied you know shunned from the raids and you also bring in battle res and uh, innervate and all of those other things, right? So they want you in that raid. Yeah, fuck. I mean, whether it's thinking really hard outside the box, whether it's something weird like, it would be very weird because it's not in resto, but like, oh, a balanced druid can now battle res three more times or something. You know, I don't know. 
Um, yeah, utility shouldn't be forgotten. You're right, Mel. Right. And I think there is certain things that certain classes bring that, you know, you need one, at least within your class. And I think making it so that druids do the exact same amount of damage or druids are the best tanks too is unrealistic because they can also battle res and they can also innervate. And that's too much utility comparatively to what they could bring. But mm. I digress. I think for a classic plus, in my mind, yes, class balance is important, right? Like we could redo classes. We could redo all of that. Like that's fine. But in all reality, like what are you looking for after that? Right. Like you don't just want to play like in my mind, a classic plus is not playing original vanilla again with balance changes. It's expanding beyond vanilla in a different yeah. direction that was TBC. Yeah. And that's why I think it's becoming far more likely that, like I said, the amount of tinkering that they'll actually do with the classes, I think will be left on the more minimal side of things, mm -hmm. but we, we could be looking at the extra content and the new right. items, new dungeons and raids, as opposed to new classes. Do you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. um, so even like a lot of, and don't get me wrong. I was one of these people who's like, give us TBC talents, baby in a vanilla world. And everyone had so much fun in the right. pre-patch days just before TBC came out. And it does feel really good, but right. I, I just get the impression that the team is hesitant to do that. Cause they're like, that now significantly changes that vanilla feel. We'll, we'll, sure. we'll give we'll give you the minimum. We'll give you paladins a taunt. We'll we'll make boomkins not a damage joke. We'll give shadow priests mana, but we won't do anything more than that. But we will give you new content to play around in. I just think that that's more likely now. Okay, I got a hot take. All right. Okay. This might this this would work until like this would work up until AQ and Nax. Everybody yeah. can only wear their armor class. Bada bing bada yeah. boom. Warriors like just got nerfed like to fucking ground un until uh until they get a lot of pieces. In like late B W L early A Q, because like literally a warrior in molten core is in almost all leather. So personally, I like it, but it'll be very unpopular because obviously one of the big things that vanilla mm -hmm. players like are the customization. Like being able to mix right. and match is something that people really love, and I respect that. And I and okay. as a rogue, I still hate it to this day in Wrath. Like, get the fuck off my leather, asshole. You have plate. Okay, so, so here's here's my thing is that if we want a classic plus, and maybe I'm thinking about this differently because I feel like what we've talked about so far is like a different season of mastery, right? Where it's the same stuff with a different spin on classes or on different things within it. In my mind, so you want more like actual raids and stuff. So here's my thing. In my mind, Classic Plus is expanding on the current content. And do, do we feel like the best way to do that is to continue to keep the cap at 60? Do we feel like the best way to do that is to increase it by 10 levels, the next expansion? Or do we say like, hey, here's Classic Plus. We Once you get to level 62, you open up these dungeons and these raids right once you get to level 65 you open up this and it's can new I, content yeah I, I know what you're saying can i say i feel yeah. like the dumbest person alive because i've never even considered this and it's brilliant and <laughs> um i have not seen any comments and i read a lot of the fucking subreddit i've not seen any comments even remotely raising something similar to this don't get me wrong someone might have said it before but i've not fucking seen it um, I, I get where you're coming from. And the more I think about it, the more I think it's, it's people might, the knee jerk reaction might be, no, that's fucking stupid. But I actually think there's some brilliance to it. And, and 
because that's how you potentially solve the issues with the other classes, right? Because now you're looking at like your boomkins and your your spreest and your fucking enhancement shamans or whatever. Maybe all the shit hot stuff is in those last couple of talents down in the uh, 61 to 70 pool. Do you know what I mean? If you expanded the right. talent tree slightly. Um, and, and I'm saying then, go continue the classic like feel until 60 and then try to take that beyond 60. Right. Like that's what everybody bitches about is because they want that classic feel continued. And yeah, but, whatever but happened through change. TBC. How about what this? Was that? I, oh, I was sorry. just saying the feel doesn't have to change because you're just you're right. doing another 10 levels. Here's a couple of new dungeons that you'll go to at level 63 and level 66. And here's, um, you know, we'll scale all the raids to level 70 and here's a couple of new raids. Right. Or maybe it only goes up to 65. Like maybe we don't even go 10 levels because or maybe, maybe 10 level levels is too much. Maybe you don't no. level at all. Maybe you start classic plus with let's say wrath talents right and you go through all of van- vanilla with your 50 points or 51 points right and like that's all you can do right but then they bring out classic uh tbc plus and you move on but you stay level 60 like they they work out the gears so that you still have the like percentages like or you still have the like uh ratings because like per like hate this that idea was, that was a big problem in vanilla like two percent chance to hit like never changes right so it's like always too overpowered but now you go to TBC classic but it's not TBC you're not going to TBC you're just doing raids that are in the TBC era like Kara and stuff like that but now you unlock five more points on your on your talents now everything is a little bit different that is the same thing as leveling if you unlock more talents yes first of all you're going down the same road like you're trying to take us through tbc you're trying to take us no 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 No. not tbc at all just you're trying to give us rap talents in classic like stop like we're talking about classic plus classic, classic and, would be great. Okay, but we've thrown that out the window because listen. Listen, yes, Linda. It sounds like fun. It might Linda, be listen. great. No. Let's just continue. There's a lot of people that really like classic. Yes, there's some things that they would love changed, but they have still continued to love classic. Now, if you were to branch classic out into a different direction not in the same direction with like no levels and extra talent no no so my mind you take it it has to be a whole new game it has to be an expansion of what classic is and maybe you even keep 40 man raids like i know that's not my favorite but there was a certain level of like please no fun that i had to it please no please no okay I'm, um, I'm just I'm saying. laughing. I'm laughing, Mel, because obviously chat's all over it and they picked up on it. And what <laughs> what you and I were discussing and what you were describing is like obviously they they're right to say, well, hang on, you've you've just described a WoW expansion and TBC is what you've described. It's like if we right. go to seventy, obviously just without Outland, you've described TBC. We're getting new talents and we're doing more levels and stuff. But like, see, and I just slight, want new like, talents. There's a twist on that. Well, there's, it depends because it depends if we're talking about the TBC talents or if we're designing new talents, but also like you're talking about my presumption was Mel, you're talking about like those extra 10 levels being within that vanilla world. And, you know, we are being asked to explore further within the world that we have, not a new continent, not a new fucking any of that shit. Right. I think there's some yeah. meat on the bones there of like, hey, here's some fun new talents you've never seen before. And, you know, some fun new mobs and areas and dungeons in the world of vanilla. And we're just giving you 10 extra levels. You know, we'll truncate the the experience that you need. So that we're not asking you to, you know, level 20 more hours but we'll figure out a way to keep it at that like 150 hours or whatever but i I think there's some meat on the bones there i don't think this would happen but i I think there's some meat on the bones there of that discussion of like what if classic plus was literally just like a few extra levels in the vanilla world 
Right. And I think it is an expansion. It should be an expansion, right? If you're talking Classic Plus and just them fixing things in Classic, how is that any different than Season of Mastery or Classic Era or the Hardcore Server, the things they're already trying to do, right? In my mind, Classic Plus is like a totally new vision of the game where it says everybody loves this classic game. And at some point for every single person, it went wrong. At some point in TBC, they didn't like it. At some point in Wrath, they didn't like it. At some point in Kata, they didn't like it, right? Everybody has their own opinion about when it went wrong. But as much as I I would not go back and raid in Classic right now, it was very enjoyable while I was there, right? Mm -hmm. And I think that there are definite quality of life changes that you could make. But I think if you want... Everybody says classic TBC and Wrath is kind of the trilogy. And then there's some people that say, well, you have to go to Kata. And then there's some people that say, well, you have to go to Miss. And then some people that say, you have to keep going, right? And at some point, so many people drop off. What they have in common for the most part is classic. And if you can say, let's take these classic values and let's kind of move into a different aspect of it and maybe we only increase it by two levels right and maybe the level to entry isn't crazy and i don't know i mean i think you just have to really think outside the box here <laughs> like what does uh, people really want no i agree bob i'm gonna have to step in though at this stage i think i'm gonna have to flag it i'm yeah i'm dying cool cool i'm All dying right. a slow death is there uh <laughs> it's yeah. not because of mel everything mel said was brilliant it's not Wait. because uh, yeah that was the point i'm like oh my god if i have to listen one more second of this i'm gonna die no <laughs> i don't know like nip yeah there's, i mean there's 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 so much we could do is there any last uh last comment anybody wants to put in before we close it out because this has definitely been one of the longer ones just uh, my last thing would just be don't be shy of quality of life. This is this is the experimental mm -hmm. time to be like, all right, we don't have to be stupid about the artificial slog now. Let's be real. People have lives. Quality of life features need to be seriously considered. Agreed. Yep. So Josh is basically saying RDF Classic Plus, you fuckers. <laughs> Don't get me started. Because, <laughs> no, no, no. Seriously, you know I'm a yes to that, and it's very unpopular. I am I, too. My, I don't my care epic, if it's unpopular. My epic three-hour solo rant about why vanilla players need to stop being afraid of fucking random dungeon <laughs> fighters. I don't, don't even, don't even get me started. Yep, yep. I'll, I'll, right. I'll uh, give it to anybody who says random raid finder because it's so easy. Sucks ass. Like if you yeah, right. if you want to do like the basic difficulty for random raid finder, fine. But like the fact that people could just like do the end, like I feel like you know, Josh, you say oh you're a gosh. solo player, but I feel like if you want to do the highest level of content in the game, you got to learn how to not be a solo player. My my whole thing has just been. I'll just say this: like people always give me the like the like fuck off to retail, you fucking retail player. Whenever I say shit like that, I just laugh. But like <laughs> my whole thing is like you don't have to transport us to the dungeon. Keep the vanilla feel. We travel there. That's cool. We're on our ground mounts. World PvP. Everything. I'm on board. But if in 2023 you think it's still a great fucking idea. Not to have something that automatically puts you in a group with people, bypassing the 10 to 20 to 30 minutes of spamming a chat channel, looking for people to go and do the task that you want to do. I just won't ever fucking agree with you because all I'm asking is to cut out step one and get me to step two. See, just get me automatically in that group of five and I say, hi guys. We're going to BRD. Yeah, cool. Great. I'll jump on my mount. I'll see you there in 10 minutes. Yep. That's I, all I'm fucking asking. I, I I would do a ton more dungeons than I do now. But, but like, also, I'm on Benediction, where it's actually pretty fucking easy to get in a group at any time of day for any content you need. But that's a whole different conversation because of the way servers hey. are fucked. But. Josh, I do want to play this one Mega Man voicemail for you before you go and just get your take on it. I I won't do mine. Are you down? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Is it going to get me on a half an hour rant? I have no <laughs> idea, 
<laughs> but like that'll be up to you. All right, hit me. It's actually pretty good because it's something I would like to see. But I I will not give my take. This is just Josh's take. Hello, Bob, Mel, and yes. So my question is a little bit of a tinfoil hat, and we've talked, or a lot of people have talked about Classic Plus. I'm not going to ask about that. I'm going to go the extra mile, especially with the Microsoft purchase may or may possibly happening. I'm going to ask about WoW 2. Yeah, I know. Probably not ever going to happen, but let's just live in fantasy land for this call. There. So, as classic players, I know there's a lot of people that don't play Dragonflight. I will say Dragonflight is a lot better than Shadowlands, but going off that, if WoW 2 were to be announced with these stipulations, right? One, no add-ons, with the condition that every single add-on, like your, your, uh, not DBM, but uh, your add-ons, your anything you actually need, like, okay, if this add-on helps actually causes you to be able to play the game, you can do it. Final Fantasy XIV is really good at this, because I can say, when I did play the game for a little bit, one of the most amazing things was the fact that can just play the game and no add-ons. That's amazing. Anyway, classes, let's just say classics are wrath for now. Would there be talent trees? I don't know. What would that look like? I don't know. I have no idea. But just the fact that new story, as Roth as it was, everybody starts from zero. Everyone. And yeah, some people may not want it, but the question I have, would you be excited to do that? Because to me personally, I want WoW 2, because I do agree. There are some things like, heaven forbid, like, heaven to Betsy, how many achievements and mounts do we need? It's just exhausting after a certain point. It doesn't stop me from enjoying the game, but it is a little overwhelming. Anyway, also, I, I don't know, like... What would you like to see from WoW 2 as classic players? Like, what what's the line for you to make you go, wow, WoW 2, Blizzard, awesome? Anyway, that's pretty much my question. I guess one... Actually, no, I'm, I'm just going to leave that. Anyway, I hope you guys all have a good show. Don't make it casual. Sign out. All right, first off, before right. we answer this, Mega Man, thank you for not extending that. Even I was further. just about to say, I'm <laughs> fucking glad you didn't continue it because that was the best point that you picked to, to fucking tap out. Yeah, and, yeah, so. yeah, yeah. Please just give us one point to talk about, Mega. You're awesome. But yeah, thank you. Uh, I'm going to keep it short and sweet. Look, WoW 2 comes up all the time, and I always fucking say to people, like, oh, you want to talk about 2? Yeah, sorry. You want to talk about WoW 2? You want to talk about WoW 2? You're fucking playing WoW 2, and you have been for the mm -hmm. last 10 years with every expansion that's come out. End You're on WoW like 22. Right now, I mean, a lot of people say that, but I, I don't. Okay, I said I wasn't going to give my take. No, no, no. I mean, go for it. I feel like classic your, plus is a off. different route. Classic plus is a different route. WoW two is a different game. Just make a different game. Just yes, but uh, wow, like the problem with retail is it's bloated. And Asmund Gold just started saying this, but I said it in episode 20 of Warcraft Reloaded years ago. Retail WoW, the problem with it is it's bloated. It's bloated. It's like a freaking, and this wasn't me that said this. Yip said it. It's a Japanese mall. Like, like it's literally like, just like, you could, there's a billion things to get like it's overwhelming the new players never going to do it wow 2 would be freaking sick like with new graphics everything else like a new look at the whole thing starting out classic with like all the let's let's not go all the races in retail had, at the moment but we like, had yeah. wow 2 with classic didn't we not but, like but what is the difference between wow 2 yeah. and the next expansion well, like, seriously wow you, two, you go through a leveling, everybody you go through starts a leveling process at the beginning and there's, there's still there's a leveling nothing, process yeah but there's nothing there's there's not 520 mounts in the game there's 
Yeah, but that doesn't they, will, they will have 500 mounts in the game. Eventually, that's what people yeah, want yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, no, we go on the process. It because that's what, but that's what the current WoW audience has dictated that they want. We want a million mounts because we're mount collectors. So if you go start WoW 2 with, hey, we've got fuck all mounts for you to collect, people are going to be like, what the fuck? You're now I mean, not giving them the game that no they thanks. want. Well, give them, but give what those, like, to? give those people... They're uh, like definitely give the people going to WoW two their uh, back catalog of achievements so that they could show that off in the new WoW game, but like it's like completely separate, right? Like that I think would be cool. Like just a new game, like like I uh, saw as it's not a new game as but as we go look at that's like what the survival game is going to be maybe maybe. Yeah. How cool! So would that, it that's be? why I say every expansion that comes out, its hidden title is World of Warcraft Two. Every expansion, mm-hmm. that's what it is. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I think, yeah, I think the best like WoW One was like was was like vanilla through Wrath. WoW Two was like Cataclysm through something, and then WoW Three is up to now. And then maybe okay. Dragonflight is oh, WoW 4. Yeah. But, like, we could start out the new WoW 1 with the, like, cool dragon riding that we have in Dragonflight, which is actually really cool. And I know it was you, stolen. You're, you're, you're literally explaining what it is the next expansion. That's what they'll have in the next expansion. They'll be like, know. here's a new leveling experience. Here's some new zones. Here's some new raids. Hey, you all liked dragon riding? We'll bring that along as well. Yeah. It's, that's what'll happen. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Up. All right, guys, we have had a long one. We are going to close out the show now, guys. Um, don't forget to follow us on Twitter at WC Reloaded. You can follow the Mash Those Buttons Network at the Mash Network. If you want to send us an email, do so. Send it to WCRpodcast at gmail.com. If you'd like to interact with the host of the show or... Uh, Possibly any of the guests, you can go to uh, discord.me slash Warcraft Reloaded or go to warcraftreloaded.com to get the link there. If you want to help the pod with Patreon or any or anything else, work, warcraftreloaded.com is where you want to go. All right. Mel, where can we find you? You can find me on Discord if you ping me. That's about it. All right, and Josh, where can we find you? Uh, fuck it, I'm not going to tell them. They can hunt me down if they need me. <laughs> um, look, I'm just a fucking shit bloke with shit hardcore takes. Honestly, don't tell them. If they, if they want to find me, they can find me. <laughs> it is Josh. Check him out on Cor- Countdown to Classic. Yeah. Literally, if you haven't heard of Countdown to Classic, you should definitely go. Josh, Easy. I wish I could talk him into doing weekly episodes, but... You get you get the magic when you get the magic, and Josh will put them out as he sees fit, and sure. that's the way it is. But definitely, definitely Google Countdown to Classic. And Do you imagine someone hearing me here for the first time and then tuning into my show and be like, "What the fuck? It's, that's not the guy <laughs> I heard on Warcraft Reloaded." Dude, they definitely would. They'd be like, "Well, Josh, why don't you say what you think?" Just be like. But this isn't my opinion. It's yours. Yeah, I'm too afraid. I'm too afraid of my audience. <laughs> hey, man, I yeah. I get that. And you have to be you have to be the leader there. So like like you bring We're happy on to have you here to give your opinion. Yeah, yeah. You bring on guests and like it's not your it's not your like it's not your role there to like try and push them to an answer. You're trying to get their answer and like if you give your opinion then it might screw their answer which is something i deal with a lot too like i don't want to give my full opinion a lot of times because i want the guest to feel comfortable saying theirs you know i'll say this one thing i've i've look even if like you know countdown's been going a long time now we're not going to be playing well you know we're not going to be podcasting about wow forever who who knows how 
you know, how long my show is going to go on, how long, you know, your guy's show is going to go on. There comes a certain point where you have to sort of pack it all up, but yeah, you know, we're getting to that point possibly. Run. Yeah, we are, we are potentially looking at that, you know, like it, it, it all depends for me what this classic plus thing is going to be or what the Same. next song is going to be. But like, you know, I'll always say this much and I, I will go out with this saying like, to everyone, I know I've been sort of tongue in cheek and a little bit, you know, play condescending and everything, saying, you know, fuck you, fuck them, blah, blah, blah. But like, to be seriousness for, to serious for a second, um, everyone listening to this show right now, like, I'm not being tropey when I say your thoughts and opinions on this game are just as fucking important as mm-hmm. any fucking streamer Fuck you yeah. see, any fucking content creator you see. Now, look, I know that, like, there's a lot of nice people out there. You know, Bob's fucking invited me on the show. We get along. I get along with a lot of other people in the content creation scene. Creation scene. But I'm, I'm just sort of trying to stress, like, please keep writing your comments on the subreddit. Please keep leaving comments on YouTube or start your own YouTube channel and just fucking do it. Trust me, it can pay off. But don't ever think that you don't matter or that fucking content creators know more than you. We don't fucking know shit. We're flying by the seat of our pants. We're all fucking, you know, idiots as well. Please don't, don't, don't revere creators like you're nothing. Like, Get involved in the community and get your voice heard because trust me, it'll be fucking, you know, carrying a lot of weight. And and that's my whole thing is I want to hear from the people who don't get heard. Preach. Yeah. And this is like, like, this is so huge. And if you start a, you, a YouTube, please come into our Discord and like post it in the like promote your, your self channel. Like we, we would love to have more like, so please, yes, keep coming. Like, it's like the best line from. Everything matters. Yeah, the best line from uh, the Big Lebowski is, well, dude. Well, but that's like just your opinion, man. Like, yeah. seriously. Like, and it. That's what I love about Josh's show and my show is that like we just let people tell theirs. Like, and I think that's great. So yeah. Please I mean, I argue that. a lot, but yeah, I let and, people uh, tell their opinion. We will have the links for Josh and the links for his Discord in the show notes, so definitely check that out. If you want to find me, you can find me on Twitter at twitter.com slash blazon underscore Bob. That's B-L-A-Z-Z-I-N underscore B-O-B. You can find me at Twitch and Kick at Blazin Bob. And yeah, we are going... Oh. Nice. One actual last thing I wanted to say, uh, Josh. I love that you bring the com- like you bring non con content creators on, and I think it's beautiful and it's something that I'm scared to do. And I'll show you right after we end this stream. Uh, one of the reasons, like recently, that just showed me how dangerous it is. But you heard cats so well. Like I, I, I you I'm, hear the community, and I love that about you. Yeah, I love it. Like I app, like I want to steal it from you, but I'm too scared to bring on unvetted people. And you do it all the time, and do it masterfully. I'm more wary of content creators than a non-content creator. <laughs> to be honest with you. Well, um, after uh, after I show you what, what I'm going to show you after here, uh, you might have a different opinion, but. Yeah, maybe. I've been very lucky. Look, look, I'll say this. Last, last, last point. You set the tone. You know what I mean? When you... And you uh, do that anyone, well. Well, if anyone out there is thinking of creating a YouTube... And I know I sit here and I, I, I demonize content and content creators a lot. I know it's weird. but And <laughs> I simultaneously encourage people to create content. So I'm sending very mixed messages. But like you set the tone for what you want your community to be they will literally follow you like this is why i get really rubbed the wrong way when fucking content creators go like hey man i can't control what my community does you know you can't i can't be expected to be you know responsible for the actions of thousands of other randoms that's true that is true you're not responsible But what generally happens is a crowd follows the lead and the demeanor of the content creator. If you're a fuckwit, 
Your fans are going to be fuckwits. Yeah. So I've been really lucky. And if the, like, you could even be a fuckwit creator. And as long as you tell your people, please do not go and, like, harass this person. Like, that's one step in the right dir- direction, uh, right? Like, I, I disagree with that as well. You think so? <laughs> nah. you think no, because it's trying, to, it's trying to have your cake and eat it too. It's bullshit. True. If someone's true, a right? fucking, if someone's a fucking asshole true. on stream <laughs> and they fully act immature and I'm a piece of shit and fuck you and fuck them, and then they go like, Oh wait, guys! What they say? Not as I do. Don't be like me, and don't do that. Like you're that setting true. a bad that example is, and asking people not to follow it. Yeah, yeah, for yeah, sure. That is, that is totally All true. All right, signing off. All right, guys. We'll see you next week. See ya. Thank you very much for checking out Warcraft Reloaded podcast. Make sure to like and subscribe, and hit that bell so you don't miss any future content. <laughs>